For fans of the Orangemen, Syracuse quarterback situation was cause for a headache last year, but their defense can hand out pain of its own. And it is week one. Everyone's undefeated, and all can dream of the year's ultimate goal. Rutherford, New Jersey, outside the stadium. The fans of Georgia Tech and Syracuse have gathered. The sights, the sounds, and yes, even the smells of college football 2001. As we're set for the first meeting ever between these two schools from the Big East and the ACC. Inside Giants Stadium for the 2001 kickoff classic, it's the Orangemen of Syracuse against the number 13 Ramblin' Wreck of Georgia Tech. Hi again, everybody. I'm Brad Nessler, and welcome to East Rutherford, New Jersey. Should be an interesting matchup for us today. You've got a Syracuse program that's gone 14 straight years with winning seasons, a Georgia Tech team that has gone now to four straight bowl games. They haven't done that since the 1950s and the legendary Bobby Dodd. My partner's Bob Greasy. Bob, one of the reasons I think, though, that Syracuse has lost five games each of the last two years, they don't have a Don McPherson, they don't have a Marvin Graves, they don't have a Donovan McNabb in a quarterback anymore. And it's not uh, fair to compare them to those guys. Uh, defensively last year, they led the conference. They were the best team in the conference. Offensively is where they had their problem. This year, they've got nine fifth-year seniors back on offense. The problem comes at quarterback. They've thrown almost twice as many interceptions as they have at touchdown passes. This is what they need to do. They need to get some consistency out of the quarterback position this year. Well, Georgia Tech certainly got that last year. This time a year ago, they were wondering who's going to take Joe Hamilton's spot. I think George Godsey did pretty well. 18 starters back for Georgia Tech. They've loaded at every skill position. The only problem is George Godsey had surgery in January. They say he's recovered. The thing about it is George O'Leary is not so convinced. He's worried about that. That's his biggest concern going into the season is the health of his quarterback. That and maybe the expectations of the Georgia Tech fans as if they haven't been big enough. This is the New York Post today. They've got Georgia Tech as the number one team in the country. George is probably hoping his team didn't have time to read the paper this morning. <laughs> Let's head back across the river and back to Times Square Stadium to our guys in the studio. John Saunders, Terry Bowden, fellas. All right, guys, thanks a lot. There's probably going to be talk in the ACC that Georgia Tech might not be the best team in the ACC. Florida State, this will be their 10th year in the conference. They're 70 and 2, but Georgia Tech, a lot of people feel this is their season. It could happen. Nobody plays Florida State better in the ACC than Georgia Tech. They have more talent than they had in a long time. But, John, they play Florida State in Tallahassee. Yeah, that definitely could be the X factor in that. Yesterday in college football, defending national champions Oklahoma taking on North Carolina. Rocky Kalmas of the defense picks up the fumble, takes it in for a touchdown. North Carolina had five turnovers in the first half. Oklahoma's up 41-14, but still not a very defending championship-like performance. TCU against Nebraska. Thunder Collins had a couple of touchdown runs. The defense looked good as well. Frank Solich said they had to get better on defense this year. Only gave up seven points on a turn on a busted play. BYU and Tulane. Brandon Doman, it rattles around a bit into the hands of Spencer Neve. 27 yards on the touchdown. Very BYU-ish performance. I mean, debut by Coach Gary Croton. 26 yards of offense. And Wisconsin knocks off Virginia 26-17. They lose Brooks Bollinger, though, with a bruised liver. Who do you like in this afternoon's game? Well, Georgia Tech's been thinking all offseason about Florida State. Syracuse been thinking about Georgia Tech. Close game, but I got to give it to Georgia Tech. Syracuse better start thinking of George Godsey. Uh -huh. This guy was a terrific quarterback taking over for Joe Hamilton from a year ago. 23 touchdown passes and over 2,900 yards through the air. Syracuse, Georgia Tech coming up. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. Better than he was before. Better. Stronger. Faster. Introducing the all-new 270 horsepower Chevy Trailblazer, the most powerful mid-sized sport utility in the world. It's one strong SUV. The new 2002 Chevy Trailblazer, like a rock. It's not for sale. No, 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 no. Some things are just too good to let go of. That's why there's Valvoline Max Life. The first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines, Max Life conditions use seals to help prevent leaks and helps you hold on to your car for a long, long time. Don't even think about it. Valvoline Max Life. 
Inspector Patsy. Is this Clarice? Well, hello, Clarice. Is he dead? Unfortunately, you've caught me at an awkward moment. See you around. Dr. Lecter. Hannibal, rent or buy it today. Big stuff is going on here at 7-Eleven. It's the new Big Sub Combo. Choose an Italian Big Sub sandwich. Three kinds of meat and provolone cheese. Or smoked turkey with Swiss. Plus a big gold and a big grab of chips. It's, it's a, a bigger, bigger, better summer. All vacations are canceled until the network integration is complete? <laughs> All but his, I bet. What is it this time? Jumbles of hardware? Databases built on 10 different platforms in 20 different countries? Does he think that's news to me? Serve it up. Send it my way. Bring it on, buddy, because I'll get it done. And that happy vacationer, the one waving from the beach as your yacht passes by, that man is going to be me. You can accomplish anything, even seamless integration. Fujitsu. The possibilities are infinite. Back at Giant Stadium for the kickoff classic Syracuse and Georgia Tech time for us to join the third man in our team as always and a guy that is now in Canton Ohio old number 88 still with that big smile I don't know if he's still got these kind of moves but he was inducted into the Hall of Fame just about a month ago Bob and I and a lot of Swanee's friends were there in Canton, but this is the first time we get to publicly congratulate your partner. Welcome to the Hall of Fame. Brad, thank you very much. I guess the Hall of Fame is, is one way of measuring one's career, but in my hand, Brad and Bob, I have a yardstick. It's a simple measuring tool. But for the purpose of this game this afternoon, the yardstick is going to be wearing number 54 for Syracuse. His name is Dwight Freeney. He is unbelievable at rushing the quarterback. The Georgia Tech offensive line is going to have to measure themselves against his strength and speed. Now, last year, he was tied for number three in the nation with 13 sacks. Tied, and he only played seven games. In that seventh game before his injury, he sacked the most elusive man in college football in the year 2000, Michael Vick, four and a half times. Today, he wants to measure up to that last game performance. Today, Georgia Tech's line wants to measure up to his level of play. And it should be very interesting, Bob and Brad. Boy, and we're going to watch that, especially Georgia Tech with a little bit of an experience at the left tackle spot. Justin Sajanski, a true freshman out of Pittsburgh, has got it teed up. Georgia Tech won the toss. They'll receive, and that's Kelly Campbell back with Joe Burns. And Campbell, one of the most dangerous receivers and return man in college football. So the 2001 kickoff classic on a busy college football weekend that includes six games before it's all over and we're underway. It'll be Kelly Campbell from the seven. Campbell broke a tackle across the 25 and he's out near the 28 yard line. And that's where Georgia Tech will go to work offensively a 21 yard kick return by Campbell. He'll join his offensive teammates led by the goose. George Godsey, tremendous numbers a year ago, over 2,900 yards, only six interceptions on a 23 touchdown season, and he was, quite frankly, phenomenal and more than they expected. Pretty impressive when you consider the fact that he was following Joe Hamilton, but they didn't expect anybody to approach what uh, Hamilton had done the year before. Now that was a tough act to follow. First down, a rambling wreck from its own 28-yard line. Burns a single setback, and little Joe gets the call. And he got about two out to the 30. Georgia Tech offensively. We mentioned the left tackle spot was an all ACC performer and Chris Young there. So keep your eye on Jason Kemble. Roberts Blake Schmidt goes the anchor in there. Riley and Bennett round out the front wall. Here's the receivers and running backs. Mitchell the fullback at times. You've seen Joe Burns already. Matt Vay one of several big tight ends. And Campbell and Watkins are both dangerous at the wide receiver spot. Got a dual setback here and a shotgun, and they'll keep it on the ground. Sydney Ford trying to break free, but the defense of Syracuse won't let them. And that defensive front wall led by Dwight Freeney, who Swanee talked about, he just made that tackle. Josh Thomas, the other end, Ferrara, and Mark Holtzman are the guys inside. Good linebacking core. Clifton Smith led him in tackles. He's a first team Big East performer with Burton and Dumas. And in the secondary, it's Oliver Walker, Quentin Harris, the general back there, the captain, and Willie Ford on the other corner. And Georgia Tech finds itself third and five, and they're trying to find number 54 where he's going to line up because he's going to pin his ears back and bring some heat on Godsey. George to throw, fires, got a man open at the 40. It's a first down, the Yellow Jackets give it out to the 40-yard line to Kerry Watkins. On a third and five, they pick up seven. Gotsi's looking at a varied defense. Uh, Chris Rippon, the defensive coordinator, moving it around a little bit. 
This defense led the Big East last year in fewest touchdown passes allowed. Gotsi going up a good deep gets a good defense picks up the first down. That defense allowed only two touchdowns through the air in the last 24 quarters. So they don't give up much as far as getting it in the end zone. First down. Georgia Tech only about a tough yard and I mean a really tough yard for Joe Burns. We'll see Joe at both tailback and fullback. You'll see him in the slot. You'll see him out wide as a receiver. He's pretty versatile running back. Pretty good in the classroom too. He's yes. on the Dean's list. George O'Leary pulled him out of spring ball because he was wondering about his academics and he ended up on the Dean's list. <laughs> Coach told us yesterday he shocked me too. I'll do that more often. <laughs> I'll see some of these other plays. Say, hey tell you let me get off the spring practice. That was George O'Leary. He's in his seventh season as a head man now at Georgia Tech. Second down and nine. Got you from the gun. Wants to throw a screen and does to Burns. They break through that and Burns gets what he can out to the 44 yard line. A pickup of only about three. Ferrara though got out there to make the stop from his tackle position. Plenty of offensive linemen out in front of Burns. Nobody picked up any blocks. And that play looked pretty good from the start but didn't gain much more than three or four yards. Watch the offensive line. You all the to the point you always try and cut. That was Freeney they were trying to cut, but nobody else got any blocks out on the flank. Well, they picked up a third and five earlier. Let's see if they can manage a third and six. Three wide out group. Gotzi in the pocket. Now he's going to scramble out on that knee that had surgery, took a big hit, but he's got a first down in Syracuse territory at the 46 yard line. So can, a nine yard scramble. Uh, and Gotzi's feeling much better now because it's live, it's in a game. Take a look at Freeney rushing the passer. Kimball doing a pretty nice job. It's just too many guys dropping back. And when you're a quarterback that's had surgery in January and you haven't been hit low, just getting a few bumps and bruises here in the ball game early give you more confidence on that knee. He's got a grass stain on his elbow, too, from that one, but he got a first down at the 47 of the Orange Men. And here they come on the ground. Burns only about a yard, maybe a yard and a half. And George Gotze was pulled over by Coach O'Leary at practice the other day just for the very sake of taking that first hit he told us about. It. Well, there's, there's about five five or six minutes uh, um, into practice. Coach O'Leary was like, uh, you know, wanted me to come over there. And he was he's a run this way. And I just started running with the ball. And Jeremy Myers came up and just waylaid me. And I was, you know, I was surprised because I didn't know what was going on. And, I had to put my mouthpiece in and buckle up a little bit, and then Jeremy and I went at it for about uh, you know a good five minutes or so. But there was no break or anything, running to the left, running to the right, straight ahead. So you know it was it's good to get a couple of hits before uh, this game. Uh, you know I don't want to get hit once and crumble. Well, he got hit already, and then he just hit his receiver on a sensational catch by Jonathan Smith. I thought Keenan Walker was maybe going to come down with an interception here. Top of your screen, Smith does a nice job of avoiding the interception as you see him come back and fight and take the ball away. It's a nice play. Jonathan Smith, a big catch there, but it's still going to bring up a third down. And now our officials are going to talk things over as we've got a timeout taken by the Orangemen. A third and two for Georgia Tech in the first quarter with no score when we come back. Do you think you're making a difference? We do. Since you started talking to your children about drinking, teenage drinking is down 47%. To all parents who are making a difference, thank you. It's a better place to live. start my own firm, she was there. When I wanted to buy out my partners, she was there. And when I finally wanted to retire, she was there. She's always been there for me. I want to make sure I'm always there for her. At Lincoln Financial Group, we offer clear, understandable estate planning solutions to help you protect and preserve the work of a lifetime. Lincoln Financial Group, clear solutions in a complex world.
This is the all-new Silverado Heavy Duty. The most powerful heavy duty pickup you can get. And the 2001 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. Silverado Heavy Duty. More truck from Chevy. search for a way to relieve the pain after shaving. Goodbye, babe. There's a better way to soothe your skin. New Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm is an advanced blend of moisturizers and vitamins that soothe and actually improve your skin. Nivea Aftershave Balm. More evolved skin care. Bob Patterson is America's number three best-selling self-help guru. And how true is that? How true is that? Meet Bob Patterson Tuesdays this fall on ABC. Georgia Tech's first-year offensive coordinator, Bill O'Brien, and Bobby's having his first game for the second time, really, in that role. Yeah, the uh, first game was at the Peach Bowl. Uh, Ralph Regan retired, or not retired, moved on to the University of uh, Maryland and to the head coach there. O'Brien's only 31 years old. He's replacing Freegan, who had coached for 31 years. So I think it's a little bit easier when you start a new season and you're doing the call play calling instead of just at the end of the year when you got uh, Ralph Regan sitting up in the stands kind of watching what's going on. Ralph's probably watching this game today as the head man of the Terrapins getting his team ready in the ACC. Ninth play of the drive. Gatsy fires it out. Got single coverage. Nice catch out there. The first down at the 25 yard line. It's Kelly Campbell. And Campbell open to pick up 15 yards. Willie Ford ran him out of bounds. Talking with uh, George O'Leary yesterday mentioned that Check a, a lot of checkoffs at the line of scrimmage. There was single coverage out there on his top receiver, and I, I think he just probably checked off, threw the ball out there, and he picked up uh, first down. At the 25, Gotsy play action fires it out, and he's got his man again. This time down to the 11 yard line, and it's Kelly Campbell the other way. Pick up a 14 more. Kelly Campbell, so close to so many receiving records for Georgia Tech. Coming into this one, he needed 27 catches and 93 receiving yards to set all the school records. He's well on his way in that receiving yardage area. Uh, George uh, didn't get a good spiral on this ball. It's a little bit behind him, and he had to wait for a little bit. If that ball would have been thrown a little bit more crisper to the outside, he may have been able to turn it up for the touchdown. First and 10 at the 11. Dual tight ends. Oh, man, did Joe Burns run into a head-on collision from Charles Burton, the linebacker, number 37. And Burton starting because... Junior Johnson would have been the starter there. Burton would have played a lot, but Johnson had some academic problems that didn't get cleared up in time, so he is not here for the ball game. Burton's another one of those guys that was a safety. Now he kicked up to a linebacker, similar to what some of the other guys have done in the past at Syracuse. Twelfth play of Georgia Tech's opening drive. Ford takes a couple of Syracuse tacklers with him to the four-yard line. Sidney Ford, only 5'9", 205-pounder, but a tough six-yard run there. Tech can get a first down inside the one-yard line. They've got third down and three now with the ball just shaded outside the four. They've got some mammoth tight ends, and they've got two of them in there right now. And again, whistle stop play. And again, Syracuse, I think, going to take a time out here. That's their second one on this opening drive of six minutes for Georgia Tech. Coach Pasqualoni looking on, hoping his team can come up with a defensive goal line stand. We'll find out when we come back. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. Better than he was before. Better. Stronger. Faster. Introducing the all new 270 horsepower Chevy Trailblazer, the most powerful mid sized sport utility in the world. It's one strong SUV. The new 2002 Chevy Trailblazer, like a rock. taste you 
have. My, my, my. This one's just right. My, what big eyes you have. You have no idea. Great tasting one calorie Pepsi One. This one's just right. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, fine. I got this card for the air miles, but they hit us with airline restrictions and blackout dates. It feels like we're in prison. We are never gonna get out of here. Honey, use my Miles One card from Capital One. Capital One. With Miles One, there are no blackout dates. Fly any airline and get a 9.9 .9 fixed rate. What's in your wallet? From atop Giant Stadium and inside Georgia Tech, in the midst of a six-minute drive that's carried them the length of the field, and they can get a first down inside the one, but they'd have to get it to about the two-foot line. They told us so much about how much they were going to use their tight ends more this year, Bob. I don't know, third and three, maybe that's a spot. Dual tight end set. Gotsy sets, waits, incomplete. He one-hopped it, intended for Kelly Campbell. And that'll bring out the field goal unit. Well, strength against strength right off the bat. Georgia Tech's offense against uh, Syracuse defensively. Nice drive for Georgia Tech getting it down, but they didn't get it in, and uh, Syracuse is going to hold them to a field goal attempt. Luke Manjay is Georgia Tech's kicker, and he's a good one. A Groza candidate. There's his numbers from a year ago. This will be a 22-yard field goal attempt. And up. And good. So Georgia Tech doesn't get the touchdown they wanted, but they salvage three out of a long drive to open their season. 8.50 remaining in the first quarter, and Georgia Tech now in front by a field goal. Well, we had the Pigskin Classic yesterday. This is the kickoff classic, and we got a whole bunch more coming up next Saturday as ABC's college football's got a triple header kicking off at noon Eastern West Virginia against Boston College or North Carolina and the aforementioned Maryland Oklahoma Air Force Colorado State and Colorado and then the nightcap and a triple header will be at Penn State to watch number two Miami against Joe Paterno and company a lot of the country will see Wisconsin and Oregon and Wisconsin got out to a winning way yesterday with a victory over Virginia check the local listings for the game in your area next Saturday about that Oklahoma game last night, wow huh? National champions uh, all during a little bit. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing uh, Larry Coker at the uh, University of Miami going That's up right. to Penn State. See what Joe Paterno's got up there. Should be a real emotional start with Adam Talaferro, the player that was uh, partially paralyzed and now has recovered. Going to lead his teammates out next week. We lead can't him wait out. to be there. Yep. It'd be, uh, that'd be a good one. We were there the week after he was hurt last year, and uh, it's going to be uplifting for all of us to see him. Jay to kick. James Mungro a yard deep, hesitates. So oh, almost put his hand or foot rather across the line. He does take a knee. And Syracuse will work from its own 20 yard line. Let's check in with Swanee. Well, Brad, you the opening game. There are a lot of questions you have to find out. One is about the conditioning, and with the temperatures you see there on the field over 100 degrees, you're going to find out very quickly if your football team is in shape. Syracuse felt like they had a great off-season conditioning program, and you know, Brad, you're from Atlanta. It's been a hot summer down there, and these guys come in good shape. But both teams have set up in the locker room just in case some IVs if the ball players get a little dehydrated in the first half. A little bit warm down there already. Here's a toss to Mungro on the first play offensively for the Cues, and they get a yard as Daryl Smith made the stop for Georgia Tech. So Troy Noons is the guy at quarterback. We talked with him yesterday. He's a confident kid. Didn't put up great numbers last year, though, and sometimes pressed a little too hard through too many interceptions. He wants to improve on that area this year. He started the first seven games last year and, uh, and did well, except that the last couple he had, he threw like eight interceptions in two ball games, and, uh, and he wants to do better than that, and he's capable of it. Faces a second and nine from the shotgun. Georgia Tech thinking about a blitz. They'll back out of it. Noon throws it in and in and out of the hands of Mo Jackson, who probably should have had it. Offensively for Syracuse. The big eaters up front of Troy. P.J. Alexander's a first-team all-conference performer. Connor, Romeo, Burton, and Deloach round out the front wall. His receivers and backs, Kyle Johnson back for a six-year. He's their leader of this whole group. Mungro we've already seen. Manley, the tight end, and Jackson and Campbell are his wide receivers, who he'll no doubt use right now on a third down and nine. 
David Tyree's come in as an extra wide out as well. A lot of shifting <laughs> for the Orangemen. <laughs> they know where they're supposed to be. They're just trying to fool <laughs> defense. Noons will roll out of the pocket, throwing the run, and a nice throw and a great catch. David Tyree, who had just checked in, stretches out, and he's got a first down on the third and nine. He got 12. Good throw, nice, strong throw. All that movement around before the snap of the ball was designed to confuse the Georgia Tech defense. But as he rolls out, throws it to the outside, away from the defensive man, and a nice catch. Nothing wrong with that toss, and an even better catch, as Bob said. That's, it's, it's, and it's important when you first get on the field to make a first down or two to stay out there, especially after the other teams had a long drive. Now they're just outside their own 33-yard line. Again, from the gun, three-receiver formation, safety blitz coming, and Mungro runs the other way and right past it. Mungro in midfield. All the way down to the 38-yard line. So James Mungro rips off the 30-yard run. It's a good call, partner. You said it. The safety blitzed from the defense's left side, and the play was run the other direction. Nice blocking up front. The safety came from the wrong side as far as the play was concerned, and Mungro does a nice job of picking up a nice big game. So the Orangemen... Trying to answer Georgia Tech's opening scoring march and doing a good job so far. They've worked it for the Tech 37. Kyle Johnson, the fullback, is the motion man. Inside give this time to the 35 to Mungro as he got two, maybe three. Defensively for Georgia Tech, they're four up front. The two ends are great and Gathers and Rogers. Johnson and Watson man the inside post. It's a rangy group of linebackers led by Daryl Smith, Winbush and Brown. Flank him and the secondary, Marvius Hester, Chris Young, Jeremy Myers, and Albert Pori in the secondary. Already they've moved Chris Young at times to corner and brought in Pori Collins. So Georgia Tech still shuffling their secondary, trying to find the right combination. Second down and eight for Syracuse. Mungro this time all wrapped up, and that's a nice play defensively by what of those ends I was talking about, Greg Gathers. Those two defensive ends will give you headaches all day long. I don't think you're going to try and get around them. You're going to try and get inside of them like the previous play that Mungro ran when the safety blitzed. There you see Gathers just gathering <laughs> the running back and just pulling him down. So a loss back to a third and 12 back at the 39-yard line now. Roy Nunes comes up under center now. Will he back out into the gun? Yes. Johnson is full back in a slot right. With two wideouts. It looks like he's trying to change the play. He's going to have to hustle. On third and 12. Plenty of time. And he throws a strike. Maurice Jackson. Oh, crossing pattern. Ball. And Jackson all the way down to the 11-yard line. That was a nice throw as well. A pickup of 28. Somebody forgot to tell Troy Noons he can't throw the ball. Hey, he's throwing the ball well. Georgia Tech with a three-man rush, dropping eight. Sees very well. Noons steps up and just throws a strike. Somebody gets a block from the backside and just really uh, set up the whole run there the last 10, 15 yards. Two tight ends now in for Syracuse. First and 10 at the 11-yard line, exactly like Georgia Tech had on its opening drive. Backfield this time. The gives to Munro, nothing doing. And it's Gathers again. Probably a loss of a yard. Gathers number 55, the junior out of Laplace, Louisiana. 6'1, 260 pound all conference performer. And Swanee talked about Dwight Freeney being third in the country in sacks last year. One of the guys he was tied with was Greg Gathers, who also had 13. We had nine starters back on that Georgia Tech defense. Two of the most dominant ends in the country, probably as a pair. There's a defensive coordinator, Ted Roof. He's an alumnus. He was an all-conference performer at Georgia Tech. He was an overachieving linebacker, and he likes his linebackers to do likewise. Second down. Thinking about a quarterback draw, I think not. Rogers from the backside. The other defensive end, Gathers, is the one that forced him. And his partner on the other end, Rodgers, is the one that planted him. And now it's third and long. And yeah, whatever you do in the pocket, you better do it quickly because one of those defensive ends is going to come around the corner. I 
think you're right. I think this was a quarterback draw on those tackles that were blocking on those ends. Thought that the quarterback was not going to be deep in the, in the pocket. He was going to be gone by then. It's third down at 14, backed up to the 15-yard line. A lot of shifting. A lot of shifting. Now they bring a trio of receivers out to the near side, including Johnson, the fullback. Noon's looking that way. Fires complete, but it's just going to be inside the 10-yard line, down to about the 9. David Tyree, who made a nice catch earlier on this drive, gets the reception, but that's going to bring out Syracuse field goal unit. And that was a sore spot for them a year ago, their field goal kicking. Tech just dropping off, playing a deep zone, forcing the throw underneath, and forcing them to kick the field goal. Mike Schaefer was only 7 of 20 last year, and his career long is 37. This is a 25 yard field goal attempt out of a Jared Jones hole. Jones got it down, the kick is up, and it's wide right. So their problems continue. Snap wasn't perfect. But he hit that one straight, but he hit it three feet wide to the right. Syracuse a good drive and nothing to show for it. Still Georgia Tech three, the Orange men nothing. You the monster. You've worked hard. And as you plan for the future of the people who depend on you, you search for the right financial partner. In Pacific Life, you found it. Nearly half the Fortune 500 rely on the Pacific Life family of companies. With over 130 years of experience and more than $300 billion of managed assets. For your family or for business, discover the power of Pacific Life. Why don't you get us something to cool this fire down? I got just the thing. that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. That, that's not that bad. Camp is where it all begins, and championship dreams are born. The American Bowl. Raiders. Cowboys. Monday night at 8 Eastern on ABC. Coach P, Paul Pasqualoni in his 11th year as a head coach at Syracuse. Getting a little more involved with the offensive side of the ball this year, Grease. Yeah, he is. Uh, there's a look at Troy Noons. I think he just feels like uh, he wants to get involved and help these quarterbacks along a little bit. Noons with a nice drive just didn't convert. And then psychologically for that Syracuse offense, it's much better if you can get something on the board. You know, it's too bad they didn't. Gotsy on first down. Flips it out. Kelly Campbell got another kick, broke a tackle. He's shifty, and he's out of bounds with a first down out across the 35-yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Budweiser, who salutes America's designated drivers. Monster.com, who reminds you, job good, life good. And McDonald's, we love to see you smile. George Gotze has had a good opening quarter here with three minutes, three seconds left in the quarter. A first and ten for the Ramblin' Wreck after that completion to Campbell. Gotze, oh, there's Freeney. First sack of the day and the first one of the year for Dwight Freeney, the senior captain. Nine straight games with a sack now, and that dates back to the year before last. He's lined up. He's standing up this time. He's not on the ground. Didn't have his hand on the ground. He was more of an inside linebacker. And uh, I think he had a little bit confused. Here he is right here. Watch as he's going to come right up the middle. Dropping Gotsy for a loss of eight. That's a big mismatch because you've got a back trying to block uh, Freeney. Off play action. George throwing on the run. Would have been 
a great adjustment by Jonathan Smith if he could have caught that thing. He laid out for it, but the pass was too far in front, and it'll bring up third down in a mile. That time the pressure came on Godsey again, and George had to flush out of there and throw back against his body and didn't get that in the right spot. Talk about coaches working with quarterbacks. Uh, George O'Leary's uh, seeing a little bit more of the offense this year. Is it not because he doesn't trust Bill O'Brien, but you know he had so much trust in Ralph Friedgen that he just wants to make sure that everything's you know, going along yep. in the right way. I think it's smart. Third down at 18. Tech was great on third down last year and in its opening drive. Blitz. Scotty got rid of it and got it up to midfield. And it's Campbell again. He finds a way to get open, doesn't he? Campbell's his number one guy, and what a what a veteran throw that was by Godson. He had some pressure. Watch as he's going to stand in there. One guy's at his feet, another guy's coming right in his face. He had to throw it over a couple of guys. Oh, well, bringing this one back. What we didn't see was the flag. <laughs> Probably a holding with all that heat coming on Godsey, who under pressure got it to the right spot, but it's all for naught. Yeah, except for the highlight film at the mm. end of the season. <laughs> That's right. Looks real good then. <laughs> Doyle Jackson's that our referee. Was holding by the offense. Penalty is 10 yards from the previous spot. Repeat the third down. George wants to know who it's on. Mm, that might have been it right there, huh? That, yeah, well, that looks like a takedown there. Jason Kimball, that guy that's trying to man that left tackle spot. He's a fifth year senior, but as we said, Chris Young was the guy that started there. For the last two years as an all-conference performer. It's third down at 28. There aren't many in the playbook for this. Oh, what a hit. And it's Freeney. His second sack of the drive, and Godsey's gonna feel that one until Thursday. Ouch. Uh, Freeney is the player that Lynn Swan talked about at the beginning of the ballgame. Number 54 just running around. Oh. Matt Bay, the tight end, he just creams it. And that was the concern of O'Leary going into the game was the health of his quarterback. I'd say if he's not all right, you know, he's all right now. I guess so. Unless he got hurt by a couple of those blows in there. But coming into the game, I'd say that knee was uh, healthy. Dan Dyke to punt from his own end zone, mishandles it, but he got rid of it. And a pretty good kick. Malik Campbell waits at midfield, waiting for a block, giving some ground, trying to turn the corner, but Georgia Tech will run him out of bounds, but Syracuse is going to have great field position after forcing Georgia Tech to punt from their own end zone. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary so far. Georgia Tech had a good opening drive, got three points out of it. Syracuse had a great drive as well and ended up with nothing but now they've got an opportunity to straighten that out as they'll work from their own 48 yard line. Again Syracuse will shift two wide outs. And Chris Davis in there at the fullback spot. Noon's quick throw on the slant complete. Nice and safe. Johnny Morant made the catch. Pick up of six. There's our Pacific Life game summary. Godsey, a good start, yep. but got nailed twice by Freeney on that last drive. Not much on the ground for Georgia Tech. Mungro, five rushes already 29 yards on an 11-play drive that came up empty for him. But again, they're right back in Georgia Tech territory now at the 47-yard line. This reminds me of the uh, Dallas Cowboys with all of their shifting back in the old days. Our first and ten presented by Chevy Trucks. And Mungro off the left side. Only about a yard needed for that first and ten. Still going to be a third down and four. Daryl Smith, the middle linebacker, made the stop for Georgia Tech. And he's a good one. He led this team in tackles last year, all-conference player. They've got a lot of a lot of uh, talent back. A lot of key players. The leading tacklers back. The leading sackers back. The leading interceptors back. They've got uh, they've got all the ingredients. Some say that this may be the best team that they've had since their championship team of 1990. And I think this squad maybe even is has the capability of at least being more talented. I think they're faster definitely than that team of 11 years ago. That's. Graham Manley, one of the co-captains, is starting tight end who's down and now on his way up and apparently is okay. See if he got mixed up, tangled in the, yep. He's got rolled up on from behind. 
but he's walking off under his own power with a little bit of a limp. You see that happen a lot to offensive linemen. Manley's the tight end, and uh, I think he's in this offense. He's half offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. That's for sure. So it's a third down and four. Final play of the first quarter. If they get it off, they won't. So we played 15 in the kickoff classic. Both teams have had impressive drives. Syracuse defensively dominated the last time Georgia Tech had the ball. And now the Orangemen in Georgia Tech territory at the end of the first quarter. The Yellow Jackets on a loop. Manje field goal lead 3 0 over the Orange Men of Syracuse. Always changing, rearranging, get into the new. How about McDonald's new taste menu? It's something new. Let it out from within. Take the world for a ride. Something's different, something's changing all the time. Always changing, rearranging, get into the new. Oh, the new favorites just waiting for you. McDonald's new taste menu. The place to look when you're looking for a change. This is Silverado Heavy Duty. Available with the new Duramax diesel. The most powerful diesel you can get in a pickup. Silverado Heavy Duty. More truck from Chevy. ironing board why not this is a kitchen table not a desk it's both now and dad's got a schedule for that dinner's at 11 ish marky go work in your room there's no desk up there and i can't stay away i just get in bed it's like out would you like a room with a nice big workspace great what's this look like a holiday inn <laughs> hey grandma want a room with room to work holiday inn gives you more and more is better Try to stay cool on the sideline. White Freeney was red hot defensively in the last series as he had two sacks that forced Georgia Tech to kick from its own end zone. And now a third down situation coming up different. for his teammates on offense. You got different situations on the sidelines with fans. And one side's got uh, got the big white ones, and the other one's got the lower green ones. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. If they know something, and the other ones don't. I don't know. So we go the other way on a third and four. Nunes has been pretty effective at quarterback. He's had some nice throws so far through the first 15 minutes. Tech thinking about a blitz. They're going to bring one from the corner. Penalty markers down. Quarterback down. And Ather Brown is the guy that blitzed. Yeah, Syracuse, uh, the one of the receivers, moved. So the penalty will be against uh, the Orange. Chris Davis, the guy that came out of his stance, I think. Oh, we got a double penalty. Motion and holding. And you still got your quarterback drop. Yeah. <laughs> that's, Not that's, good. That's, that's, that's a triple header right it there. It sure is. Paul Pasqualoni, who uh, maybe like his quarterback, who's had to follow some awfully big footsteps. And when you go back in Syracuse history through Ben Schwartzwalder and Both Coach fouls, McPherson, the motion and there's the some pretty big shoes to fill. Yeah. It's fourth down. So Georgia Tech declines those penalties and forces a punting situation for Syracuse. Mike Schaefer will punt. And back deep for Georgia Tech is Kelly Rhino. Familiar name to Georgia Tech fans. His daddy was a good one. Three time All American. His grandpa wasn't bad either. Schaefer to kick. 
Not the greatest of punts. Everybody trying to get out of the way of that one. It'll roll dead right around the 20 yard line. A 32 yard punt. Georgia Tech will take over just outside its own 20. Not a good series offensively for Syracuse. They got the ball almost near midfield. Uh -huh. Didn't do anything with it. Syracuse has been in the kickoff classic before the last time they were in it. I remember we were here in 1997 the opening kickoff. Kevin Johnson took it. 89 yards for a touchdown and they went on to wax Wisconsin 34 to nothing. Georgia Tech's been in this game before too. Here's Tech on the ground and they can't get anything going with a running game. Sidney Ford pulled down by Willie Ford. Reminder. ABC Sports bringing you the Little League World Series presented by Honda. And Florida and Japan are going to get together for the World Championship game, 6.30 Eastern. The game coming up with Brent Musburger, Harold Reynolds, Sorrell Hershiser. I've enjoyed watching that. You know, I played when I was a kid, and I coached my kids when they were kids. I really enjoyed it. Well, they've had some great performances, both by pitchers and then the bats came alive yesterday. Godsey play action, got his man at midfield. Kelly Campbell, one man to beat. Down the sideline is Campbell, all the way to the nine yard line. It's first and goal, the Ramblin' Wreck. And that right there, I think, just became the all time leader for Georgia Tech in receiving yards for a career because he didn't need many and he just ripped off 72 right there. Campbell all conference in the uh, ACC 10 touchdown passes each of the last two years the ball is under throw and he's got to go back to catch it and then the foot race and he gets caught by Harris big play for Georgia Tech 116 yards already on four catches for Kelly Campbell so you can etch his name in the record book one more time for Georgia Tech all time yardage leader all time touchdown catcher. And now he's just got to worry about making a few more grabs along the way and he'll take over for Harvey Middleton in the number of receptions in his career. And you know he's just on the sideline kicking himself because he didn't get yep. in the end zone on that long play. Second down and goal. Both wideouts down to the bottom of your screen and Watkins and Smith. Godsey inside handoff draw play a little bit of room that time down to about the four for Sidney Ford. Clifton Smith made the stop and it'll be third down and goal. Harris number four the free safety nice draw look. You saw Harris just look away. He read the Godsey and he thought it was going to be a pass. This Georgia Tech offense has a lot of formations a lot of movements doing a lot of nice things Four wide out grouping on third down and goal at the four and another whistle Syracuse take its Final time out of the half. I believe so. And the reason they they're did. having to do that is because of the substitutions. Georgia Tech is getting their guys in there. Syracuse is not matching up with them. There's only one Amazon. There's only one jungle. There's only one mother. There's only one mother. There's only one past. There's only one future. There's only one Jeep Liberty. The next great Jeep idea. It's not for sale. No, 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 no. Some things are just too good to let go of. That's why there's Valvoline Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. Max Life conditions use seals to help prevent leaks and helps you hold on to your car for a long, long time. Don't even think about it. Valvoline Max Life. And for a simple way to keep your wheels looking great, use Eagle One A to Z Wheel Cleaner.
Our son was studying to be a rocket scientist, but now he has a position here in the stadium. Hey, Dad. Son, I'm so proud. How about serving me up one of those frost-brewed Coors Lights? Sure, Dad, but first there's something I need from you. I know, son. I know your mom told me. I have to show you more affection. You actually need to show me your ID. What? 21 means 21. No ID, no Coors Light. But he's old enough to be your father. <laughs> like I haven't heard that one before. It's like the tooth fairy thing all over again. Florida's home run power derailed the Bronx Baby Bombers. Now they go for the World Championship, the Little League World Series presented by Honda. Today, live at 6.30 Eastern on ABC. Back in the Meadowlands, Georgia Tech leading by a field goal and threatening right here. 12.34 to go in the half. Kelly Campbell trotting out there. He's had a huge game already, and he's moved his name to the top of the list in Georgia Tech receiving annals. And he's wide to the left. But they'll keep it on the ground. Trying to break the tackle is Joe Burns. He couldn't. Charles Burton wouldn't let him. Nice hit by the linebacker again. A senior out of Sugarland, Texas. Yeah, and but the, the passing game is what has been working for Georgia Tech. It's gotten them down there. The running game, only nine rushes, 17 yards in those nine rushes. And that was before that last running play. So they're looks like they're going to go for it. On fourth and goal at the Syracuse two. They were 53 percent effective on their fourth downs last year. Burns trying to break a tackle. Did he get there? Not quite. Latroy Oliver, the cornerback, made the hit. That was a big hit by Oliver. That was an orange crush. <laughs> right there. So now the bad news is Syracuse offense is going to be working inside its own one. Here's another look. Oliver on the right side, number three, is only 5'8". Comes up and makes a play, then gets some help from his friends, and they hang on and keep the uh, Yellow Jackets out of the end zone. Boy, what a nice goal line stand. Looked like Godsey was uh, pushing, aiding the, uh, the runner, maybe. Doesn't matter, they didn't get in. Full house backfield now. Two fullbacks. And Newman's just trying to get some breathing room with his flags all over the field. Yeah, this, this drive by Georgia Tech is not over yet because it's on the one foot That's line true. And, and Syracuse got to get it out of there. And it's a legal procedure. Now it's back to about the nine inch line. Yeah. And the problem you run if you say, you know what, let's drop back and try to get this thing out of there is you got Greg Gathers and Nick Rogers. Those two defensive ends yeah. that are trying to make a sandwich out of your quarterback. What in the you do, you, you put one guy out way out wide and get single coverage and throw it deep to him, and you double everybody else. All those defensive ends. Again, same play. Noon's got maybe a yard and a half. And it'll bring up second down and long. That's a tough way to earn a scholarship there, Troy. This is not, scramble out of your own end zone. You know, this is not a comfortable place for an offensive team to be or a quarterback to throw out of, but there are certain throws that are good good chances out here, and that is wide receivers spread out wide, straight down the field is a good good throw. No wide receivers here out there. They stay with the two tight end, three running back set. This time, the fullback. Johnson got back to the line of scrimmage. There's another penalty on the play. Jonathan Cox made the first hit for Georgia Tech. Let's see what this flag's about. It's motion, so the yard they gained on the quarterback keeper goes right back the other way. Yeah. Georgia Tech's got the opportunity, though, to decline this, don't they? And yeah. bring up about a third sure, and eight. Sure, sure. I mean, this is a veteran, a veteran offensive uh, line for Syracuse, and, and still uh, and a veteran offensive uh, unit. Now and still they got illegal, uh, illegal motion. The offense that is declined. Third down. So it is third down and seven. Our Aflac trivia question. Which five schools have won all four original major bowl games? The Rose, Sugar, Orange, and Cotton. Good Think question. about it. I like that. Good question. Yeah, that's a good one. We'll give you the answer a little bit later on. Right now, Syracuse looking for an answer. They work on a third and seven near their own goal line. Dunes going to try to roll and throw. Does and he overshot and it's intercepted by the Yellow Jackets. Picked off and they've got it as Bob said the drive's not over. Yep. Marvius Hester's inside the five with it. That defense did a nice job. Ted Roof the defensive coordinator kept them aggressive. 
And when Syracuse tried to roll out, which I like the play, get him outside the pocket one on one, he just didn't hit his receiver. Georgia Tech continues the drive that was stopped on the one yard line. It's outside the pocket. I like this. You don't like that. No, I don't like that. I don't like that. This is the thing, the inconsistent play at quarterback that has held Syracuse back the last uh, part of last year and then starting this year. The wreck has it first and goal at the seven. Godsey, plenty of time, and he one-hopped it for his intended receiver, Kelly Campbell. Not a good throw by Goose, and he knows it. And we mentioned that uh, Syracuse does not give up many passing touchdowns. And they still haven't in this one. A 3 nothing score, Georgia Tech with 10.43 left in the half. The lone wide receiver is Kelly Campbell. Extra tight ends. They'll try to run it again. Putting his head down and bouncing into that big pile of blue and orange is Sidney Ford. But Georgia Tech just can't get anything going on the ground. See, you, you bring in two tight ends and one back. There's a lot of substitutions, but you bring in two tight ends and show them a running formation out of eye, and you run. It's second down. Second down, you can either run or pass. If you're going to show a running formation, play action and throw the ball. Or if you show a passing formation on second down, maybe you should try and run it. If this isn't a quarterback draw, we're going to see a pass here. Three wideouts. Gotsy on the roll. Looking to the end zone. Pumps once, fires, flags down, ball incomplete. And let's see what the penalty marker's about. Might it be holding on Syracuse in the end zone? Flag thrown down in the end zone, so we'll wait and see. That's a call. And that's a big call. That'll sure give him is. a first down. First down inside the five-yard line. Everybody's covered. Looked like it might have been Latroy Oliver with a bump down there. Let's check in with Swanee on the field. Well, Brian, I just want to make a comment. O'Brien's a new offensive coordinator, and Bob just did something I think he's going to have to get used to. People are going to always second-guess the calls he makes, and he's going to have to get some tough skin to get through this season. Don't you think, Bob? Yeah. Well, I think so, but I think I think he can do the job. There's no question about that. But I just uh, I just say that you know early in the season, show a running formation and throw it. First and goal outside the Syracuse two. Might have gotten a yard with Joe Burns. That interior Syracuse, they were kind of worried about their tackles, Holtzman and Ferrara. They've done a great job. We mentioned in the opening that this Syracuse defense led the Big East in defense, total defense, and they haven't given up. A, they were the fewest. Uh, they allowed the fewest touchdown passes. This is not a weak crew on defense, so uh, scoring touchdowns against this crew not going to be easy. They're bringing in some more beef, too, on that front defensive line. Second and goal, Georgia Tech. They'll try it again. Burns again. Same result. This time, Wells, the linebacker, Rodney Wells, one of the guys there. And it's going to be third down and goal. I think I think what you do is you, you put Kelly Campbell out on one of these guys and just throw one on one either a fade or a quick out or a slant. Go with your best guy against one of their guys. Syracuse fans coming to life for their defense to see if they can do it again. Third down and goal. Three tight ends for Tech Burns. They're just going to keep working it. And he's got it this time. No signal yet, but he looks to be in the end zone, and we still don't get a call. It's fourth down. I guess he didn't get there. And you know, that comes right from George O'Leary. I think, I'm sure that he likes that. He's a tough guy. He's a defensive guy. He likes that tough brand of football. If we can't run it in on four down from inside to five, then the heck by God, we shouldn't have it. <laughs> 8.31 left in the half, and they've got another fourth down coming up after this one. I thought right there he was going to get he there. I too. That looked like. He still. Oh, the ball came loose at the end, but watch it from a different angle. Now, the guys that make these calls are the two guys on the end of the lines. And they can't see. Right uh, here, the line. I still think he's in the The end line zone. judge right there, and the other on the other side, they both make the call. The umpire here, he does not make it. He cannot make that call. Can't clear the telestrator. <laughs> but. Um, it's, it's got to be called by one of the two guys on the side. 
Looked like his left shoulder was over, then the ball came loose, yeah. which was a after the fact. Right. The Georgia Tech leading by a field goal of 22 yards that capped their opening drive that carried them all the way down the field. 68 yard march in over six minutes on their opening drive. And then Syracuse did likewise, but they missed their field goal. And that's where we stand right now. Three nothing Georgia Tech leading the Orangemen and facing a fourth down situation. And they've been here before just a few moments ago. Georgia Tech's running backs have only 22 yards on 15 carries. How many running play, how many plays has Georgia Tech had inside the 10 yard line? They've had a bunch. For Syracuse and not, not scored. They're at the one foot line. Burns ahead, touchdown. That time they ran to the left instead of the right and Joe Burns took it in. <laughs> you just know that George on the sideline was saying, hey, if we can't run it in, we don't deserve to have those points. <laughs> Run to the left side by behind uh, Blake and Kemble. No problem with that one. Good tough defense. Good tough defense. George says that's more like it. Yeah. Luke Monjay's hit 91 straight extra points. He nope. just missed one. Penalty markers down. Uh oh. He may get another shot. Maybe he will. I wonder if they had too many guys on the field. Now it's 12. I think, I think call, Syracuse partner. had too many guys. That's exactly what it was. Uh -huh. Luke Monjay's streak is still alive. He's got another chance. He's only three extra points away from the ACC record for consecutive point afters. He missed this one, but you can erase it from the record books because he gets another crack at it. He's looking for flags right now. You That's what you. he's doing. <laughs> he's looking for flags. He's never missed one <laughs> until just now. But again, it doesn't matter anymore as he'll have another opportunity. Brian Camp, number 10, to hold. That drive for Georgia Tech, by the way, was only six yards in six plays. Remember that followed the marvelous Hester interception. So let's see if Luke Monjay can make it 92 straight. Yeah, that wasn't pretty either, no, but he got not. it through. Yeah. So Georgia Tech takes advantage of the interception. They turn the turnover into points courtesy of that guy, Joe Burns, from a yard. And it's a rambling wreck. In the kickoff, classic leading Syracuse, 10-0. Relax, we got supplemental insurance. What are you talking about? With what? Plus, they pay you cash. Great, huh? Who does? Aflac. Aflac. Without it, no insurance is complete. When I told my agent I was playing fantasy sports, he got the wrong idea. I like it. Enjoy the show. <laughs> I would never do that. My fantasy league, unlike sports, is just good fun. I get the latest scores, player stats, even breaking news. Whatever you're into, dig into it deeper, unlike us. There's only one Amazon. There's only one jungle. There's only one mother. There's only one mother. There's only one past. There's only one future. There's only one, Jeep Liberty. The next great Jeep idea. Georgia Tech leading Syracuse now 10-0. Short touchdown march with 8.27 to go in the half. Earlier we asked you the Aflac trivia question. Which five schools have won all four original major bowl games? Rose, Sugar, Orange, and Cotton. We gave you time to think about it. Here they are. Alabama, Notre Dame, Georgia, Penn State, and Georgia Tech. That's some pretty good company. Wait, huh? wait, what's Alabama and Georgia and Penn State, Georgia Tech doing playing in the Rose Bowl? Well, that was pre-46 or whenever. Okay. 
And of course, the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all, will cap it off. Our BCS at the end of this season with a national championship. Mungro from the nine on the kick return. And out to about the 24. Let's head across to Times Square Stadium. John and Terry standing by, guys. Brad, here on the Coors Light Update, I know you'll be watching the Little League World Series. Here's what happened last night in the international final. Brent Musburger. Suzuki's ready. Deep to right field. Hello, Florida. Tokyo, Japan. Wow. So today at 6.30 Eastern time, the Little League World Series championship game between Japan and Apopka, Florida. Brad. Back to a first down here at the Meadowlands. Noon's play action. Now he's going to roll. He'll keep it. And Troy does a nice job. Got it out across the 30 to the 32 yard line. Daryl Smith, the linebacker, tracked him down there. This is an interesting play. Fake right here. Now he's actually going to pick up one of the wide receivers right there to your right. There was three wide receivers out there, and one of them kind of hung around and waited for him. And he ran all that distance, and he had an option pitch to one of the wide receivers. Still had a trailer over there, but he kept record. it for eight. Here's the toss sweep, the diamond ferry, and he's going to have a first down. Ferry, a sophomore out of Everett, Massachusetts. In there for Mungro to give him a little bit of a breather. Uh -huh. Coming into the ball game, uh, Paul Pasqualoni and George DeLeon, the offensive coordinator, were, uh, were, were working with three different quarterbacks. Uh, Noons, uh, R.J. Anderson, and even the true freshman Cecil Howard. So we, they didn't know, who, they didn't tell us who was going to start. Noons finally got the start, but we may see one or two other quarterbacks here for Syracuse uh, this afternoon. Noon throws it out quickly, wide out screen. Mo Jackson only got about a yard. They tried to set up some blockers out there in front of him, just zipped it out, but Marvius Hester and Ricardo Winbush were out to meet him. Syracuse normally gets their yardage. And there's a look at the backup quarterback, uh, Anderson. He started the last four games of last year. But they get their yardage for the most part on the ground. They get a little bit through the air. Second down and nine. Noons hollering out to his two wide receivers to the right side from the 37 yard line. Option. Noons fakes a pitch and oh boy, he should have pitched it. Ouch. Chris Young, Georgia Tech safety, made a hit. And Noons is still down. He took one right under the chin. He did, and he didn't see him coming either. He sees that right there, and he turns up. We're going to see the next quarterback, I can tell you that right now, and our attention turns to Troy Noons now. <clears throat> Hello. That is getting ear -holed, and Chris Young is one tough, he's the toughest guy in the Georgia Tech secondary, a 210-pounder. And so now the concern for Syracuse fans. Yeah, Noons is not built nope. for the option. He's 6'2 and 185. This young man right here, R.J. Anderson, is more uh, an option style. 6'3 and we don't know his real weight. Yeah, they say anything from 230 to 242. <laughs> 242 was on the was on the uh, on the one we were initially given, and and R.J. says, "We know my weight. I lose it. I gain yeah. weight, and I can lose weight easily." That's right. And Troy Noons over there. Troy was telling us, you know, they didn't. When I came to Syracuse, they told me I'd be a backup quarterback pretty much because I weighed 156 pounds as a freshman. He's bulked up, if you will, to about 190. Yeah. But I don't care how much you weigh with a hit like this. Yeah. Bang. He's talking to Troy yesterday, and he said some of his family was coming down to the game, but his sister was not going to be able to. Amber, he was going to be with a sick aunt, so he wanted me to say hello to his sister and his aunt. I'm sure they're both worried about him right now yeah. as we are because he's been stretched out there since that hit by Chris Young for several minutes. Hard for us to speculate whether it's uh, just getting knocked silly or if it's a collarbone type situation there you see him just sort of exhale going wow what hit me. So it looks like he's going to be OK. I don't think it's any I don't. I know it's not his legs and I don't think right. it's a shoulder or anything. It looks like he just maybe have got got his bell rung. Mm. And that would be a good 
picture to get your bell rung with because you, he got hit. You got that right. It's Tim Neal, the head trainer with the sunglasses on. Chris Young coming up with a hit. He had played cornerback last year for Georgia Tech, has seen some action in that spot today, but he said yeah. safety's like going home. And uh, yeah. he might have just sent Troy Noons home for the day. And a textbook tackle. Got his shoulders up, wasn't helmet to helmet. That's good to see Troy's up. He's walking off on his own. Not walking off real fast, but he's walking off on his own. So we do have the next quarterback. And it's R.J. Anderson. And he faces a third down and six to come into the ball game. There's his numbers from a year ago. And he has gotten a lot of reps in uh, in camp because uh, they didn't know which one was going to get the start here today. The shift will bring Johnson the fullback out and a trio of receivers to the left side. And it'll be Anderson from the shotgun. Here, Here they comes come. the all out blitz by Georgia Tech. Anderson will he get a chance. Nope. Going down. Gary Johnson's got him all wrapped up the defensive tackle. So they brought the heat on the first play and Ted Roof says that's exactly what we needed fellas. When the new quarterback comes in you've got seven guys coming you've got the defensive ends containing on the outside. And there's a. There's a, there's a wolf in the hen house. <laughs> and there's a punter out there for Syracuse. Schaefer to kick. Kelly Rano waiting back deep. This is a good punt. Kelly Rano backpedals to his 18. Rano got by the first man and the second and the third. Kelly Rano flags are down as he got it back to the 35 yard line. Nifty little return, but again, a penalty marker on the play. 17 yard punt return, unless the penalty. We'll take it back. Georgia Tech would have pretty good field position. The illegal block on the return. So instead of being way out there on the 40 yard line, it's going to be back inside the 30. Foul was an illegal block in the back by the returning team. Penalty is 10 yards from the end of the run. First down. So it's right at the 25. With 5 34 left first half. Georgia Tech leads by 10. There's only one Amazon. There's only one jungle. There's only one mother. There's only one mother. There's only one past. There's only one future. There's only one Jeep Liberty. The next great Jeep idea. car at a great rate. Call or click Thrifty. You ready for a cold one? Yeah. It's cold. It's not Coors Light. Coors Light. Tasty. Nice. Mutlux. at a great rate. Call or click Thrifty. Big stuff is going on here at 7-Eleven. It's the new Big Sub Combo. Choose an Italian Big Sub sandwich. Three kinds of meat and provolone cheese. Or smoked turkey with Swiss. Plus a big gulp and a big grab of chips. It's a bigger, better summer. Thieves, Fridays this fall on ABC. Georgia Tech in the kickoff classic leading 10 to nothing as we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary in this one. Troy Noons threw that interception to Marvius Hester that got Tech to the six yard line and six plays later they finally got it in the end zone and then the starting quarterback for Syracuse just got leveled a few moments ago. The next play Georgia Tech forced a punt and the question is Swanee's Troy Noons all right. 
Well, the head athletic trainer Tim Neal said that Troy just got the wind knocked out of him, and that was a pretty tough hit. But he <laughs> said they'll check him out a little bit close, more closely at halftime, just to make sure. That's a whole bunch of wind. <laughs> the way that thing happened at the 25, Georgia Tech's got five and a half minutes to work. They'll try the ground, and they have really struggled. A gain of two. Clifton Smith made the stop. Uh, Joe Burns, second down and eight. Georgia Tech has its timeouts, uh, two of them remaining. And they'll go with the no huddle. I'll tell you what, just uh, Georgia Tech offensively, and now with the offensive coordinator Bill O'Brien, they've got everything. They've got uh, the, the no huddle, the hurry up huddle, they've got all the formations, they've got all the movements, they've got the West Coast passing, and they've got short, deep, everything you want. And a guy that can do it. Can yeah, got see. You. Back and flips it out to Campbell. Another catch, another first down out to the 38 yard line. Kelly Campbell's fifth catch. This one picks up 11, and he's got 125 yards in the first half receiving. Again, they'll go without huddling. Top Not necessarily in a hurry, but. That's deal in there. That is. The guy playing uh, 10 yards off of him, you go down eight yards and stop in front of him. That's, that's easy. First down at the 38. 438 left in the half. Here comes a blitz. And Georgia Tech trying to run by it. But a nice job of staying home defensively by Keon Walker from the secondary. And he brings Burns down after a pickup of two. Just outside the 40 now. That's where Georgia Tech will set up shop. And what's Bill O'Brien going to pull out of his hat here? He was on the other end of the line uh, talking to Ralph Regan yep. for uh, seven years. He was the guy in the, uh, the booth that was uh, telling them the coverages and all that other stuff. So Tends to make you think alike. Yeah. Gotsy. A deep out. In and out of the hands of Jonathan Smith would have been an awfully tough catch, but it's incomplete and it'll bring up third down. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Jeep, makers of Grand Cherokee, Wrangler, and the all new Jeep Liberty. Aflac, without it, no insurance is complete. Advil, nothing you can buy has proven to work better than Advil. And new Nivea for men after shave balm. More evolved skin care. It's a third down and seven. Tech's done pretty well on the third down conversions today, but that guy can make third down and long kind of tough on you. Freeney's got two sacks already. He's right over the center. Gotsy drops, buys himself some time, and got it complete. That's a first down at midfield. Nice and play. It's Jonathan, uh, Jonathan Smith. Nice play by Godsey to keep it alive. Pick up the first down and get a new set of downs. Smith bump and run. Gets a jam. Working against Jeremiah Mason. And he went down to the turf and scooped it up. Good catch. A rambling wreck at midfield with 340 left in the second quarter. Leading by 10. He sends his tight end in motion. And a stretch play to Burns. Joe Burns left side. <laughs> Again, only about a yard. Syracuse was stretching as just as well as uh, Georgia Tech yep. was that time. 13 carries for only 16 yards yeah. for Joe Burns. Yeah. Well, Georgia Tech has not run the ball well at all, all day. Especially inside the five yard line. It took them five or six, seven plays to yep. get it in the end zone. Last year they were third in the Atlantic Coast Conference in rushing, about 164 yards a game, but today it has been tough going in there. Second down and nine. Godsey from the gun. Here comes Freeney. He got rid of it, but he overshot his receiver. And the guy he overshot took a pretty good pop too. Screen, screen pass. Freeney number 54. This is the second time he's pressured him on a screen. The tackle on that side, Kimball can't get him on the ground. Freeney does a nice job of keeping his feet. He's got that number 54. That means he wasn't a defensive lineman to start with. <laughs> That's right. He's only 6'1 and 250, but not many offensive tackles can block him. Georgia Tech third down and eight. Levon Thomas has joined the wideout group that has four out there, three to the side. 
Here comes a blitz. Gotzi waits, finally fires. Nobody home. Kelly Campbell, the closest man. And it's incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down as we head to Times Square Stadium. John and Terry. All right, guys, coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Show, we'll look at what is a huge problem in college football, the lack of black head coaches. 25 openings last year in Division I, only one black head coach, Fitz Hills, at San Jose State was hired. We'll look into that in depth. Coming up on the Valvoline Halftime Show right now, back to the Meadowlands, Brad. All right, guys, we'll see you in about two and a half minutes. Chris Morehouse to punt Malik Campbell. Back in punt return formation, so Syracuse defense did its job again. Morehouse knocked this one a mile high. And Georgia Tech trying to cover it, couldn't quite make the play. As Kerry Watkins on the special teams almost caught that thing in midair. Watkins did a nice job of bypassing the punt returner, who was just faking it and going to the end zone to see if he could keep the ball out. So this will be the first series where R.J. Anderson will have a chance to go to work at the quarterback spot. Look at that, almost a nice catch. Mm -hmm. I take it back. Troy Noons is coming back to the huddle. That's a tough cookie. Yes, sir. After the shot he took the last time he was out there, he'll bring him back up to the 20-yard line. So Syracuse trailing by 10. 225 to work, but remember they used all their timeouts defensively in this half already. Noons, here comes the heat again. Got rid of it. Nice pass down the middle. Got it complete to his tight end Joe Donnelly. And he picked up about nine. I think the feeling is that Troy Noons is a better thrower, a better passer than is Anderson, the backup. He certainly was last year. Uh, score is completing a higher percentage of his passes. And Bob, I also think he's a better decision maker. In this critical situation, we want the guy who can pull the trigger on the right play to the right spot. That's a great point, Swanee. Pump fake, pump fake again. Now he takes off, and he's going to pay the price again. Dropped about a three-yard loss. Gathers and Daryl Smith are there to get him. Pretty good coverage by Tech. I think the first one was a pump fake. The second one was a, uh-oh, I better not throw it. Yeah, and there are, there, you know, there are certain times when quarterbacks have to decide on when to give up on a play you work on these plays all week and you have high hopes for it when you get into a game but it's your decision and your decision only as a quarterback when to eject and say this play's not going to work I'm throwing it away or scramble here's where you don't want to make a mistake either as Georgia Tech with a third and three defensively they've got one turnover already today Syracuse doesn't want to give them another one a minute left in the half checking off Quick slant, tipped, almost intercepted. Chris Young was there with Johnny Morant, and that ricochet almost ended up in a Yellow Jackets' hands. Yeah, Morant is a guy that they have high hopes for, and they'd like to get the ball to. He checked off to a slant to Morant. See, that's a bad route. Hit him right in the knee. Yeah, he ran a bad route. Swanee could see that. He'd be yelling and screaming. <laughs> <laughs> But he's a young kid. He's a true freshman last year. He didn't play much, didn't catch any balls. Schaefer to punt again. Kelly Rado had a nice 17 yard return negated by an illegal block last time. Is back for Georgia Tech. Another good kick. Rhino looks up in the sun, takes off from the 32. Kelly Rhino, nice return back to the 46, almost the 47 yard line. So Georgia Tech with 42 seconds to work, they might have an opportunity to get Luke Manje an opportunity for a field goal. Monday night, ABC Sports will be in Mexico City. It's the Cowboys and the Raiders in the American Bowl on Monday Night Football, live at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific. From the 47 yard line. Let's see what Jerry, Jerry George Rice, Gossie huh? can come up with. Yep. See Jerry Rice in a Raider uniform. That, that, that still looks different, doesn't that it? That won't compute, <laughs> not, not in my mind. Gossie from the gun. Over the middle. Oh boy, almost intercepted by Quentin Harris, and he would have been off to the races. That ball went right by the umpire's ear, and Quentin Harris, the captain of the defensive secondary, had he held on, I think he just scored a touchdown. Yeah, Harris is reading him the whole way. Here's Harris right here. Right there, number four. Take a look at him. 
Umpire had to duck, as a matter of fact. Yeah. That might have been why he didn't catch it. He didn't see it coming until the umpire ducked. He's still holding his hat. He wants that one back. Second down and ten. Godsey looking left the whole way and goes that way. Incomplete. Nice coverage by Willie Ford on Kelly Campbell. That was a break for Godsey because Harris could have picked that ball off on the previous play. And this game could have been 10 to 7. And this one, too. It's good coverage. A, it's not a good route. Campbell went down and rounded his route. And uh, he read that Ford read the thing the whole way. George Gotze started hot, but now he's 9 out of 17. He's missed his last four passes. Draw play. Not the way you draw it up, though. Josh Thomas stays home, makes a stop. No gain for Joe Burns. And all Georgia Tech did was use about uh, 25 seconds of clock there. They got nothing out of the punt return by Kelly Rado and our first half just about ready to wind to a close. Valvoline at the half coming up with John and Terry. And they're just around the corner and just across the river. Georgia O'Leary's 13th ranked rambling wreck of Georgia Tech with the lead, but it's a precarious one. At halftime, Georgia Tech with a field goal and a one-yard touchdown that they really had to work at, work at on the ground to get it in there. And they have a 10-point lead over Syracuse. Let's go down to Lynn Swan. Well, uh, we're disappointed we missed an easy field goal. I think that uh, I'm happy with the way Troy Nunes is playing. He threw the ball behind uh, the receiver on the outcut. But other than that, I think he's playing pretty good. W what decisions were you making? For the second half. Well, I think what we've got to do is we've got to get some type of rolled up defense uh, out on Campbell. You know, the soft coverage out there is hurting us. He's backing us off because of his speed and they're hitting a lot of short stuff, the hooks and the outs. So we got to get some type of rolled up zone over there. Got to, got to, got to get a guy on him and a guy behind him. Coupled with your defensive pressure, that would, that would serve to stop him. But on the offensive side of the ball, how are you going to move the ball a little bit further down the field? Well, I think that uh, we've got to get a little bit more of the run game going. I think we've got some run possibilities. Uh, I don't think the offense is doing bad. I think Troy is, you know, he, he's playing well. Uh, I think he's uh, he's completing some passes. So we're just going to go in and talk about it a little bit. I think we've got more offense, a little more offense than we've shown. Coach, thank you very thank much. Thank you very much, yep. All right, Swanee, thanks. It's Georgia Tech leading 10-0 in the kickoff classic. John Saunders and Terry Bowden at Times Square Stadium standing by in New York, fellas. All right, guys, thanks a lot. And I think this is one of those games, Terry, that, that's good for both coaches because Georgia Tech knows they have a good offense. Syracuse knows they have a good defense. You get to see the matchup. Well, Syracuse defense, a lot of people don't remember the leading defense in the Big East last year. Georgia Tech has got to establish some of the running game and play better in the red zone. All right, stick around. When we come back, black coaches speak out against what has been a huge problem, the lack of head coaches in Division I. Number as to how many you can have on the staff because, to me, you want the best coaches you can find. And I don't want my skin color to be the reason why I'm denied those opportunities. That's not fair. Most people go and take the safe route and go and hire someone who's white. We are depriving everyone in this country of an opportunity to do the best if you don't hire the best. After a few painful rides, I was back on the beginner's trail. Then something dawned on me. My sore muscles were telling me where to ride. That did it. I started taking Advil, just like the other bikers. Advil is strong enough to let me control the pain, really knock it out. Now I decide if I want the beginner's trail or Suicide Hill. Take Advil and take control. soft water. Some people don't. Culligan is water. Your Culligan man's got a great introductory price of just $9.95 a month. Call 800 Culligan or visit Culligan.com today. For men, every morning it's the same routine. The desperate search for a way to relieve the pain after shaving. Bye, babe. There's a better way to soothe your skin. 
New Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm is an advanced blend of moisturizers and vitamins that soothe and actually improve your skin. Nivea Aftershave Balm, more evolved skin care. I'll get this. No, a platinum card. There's always a catch. Low rates that explode. Hidden fees. It's highway robbery. Actually, I have a Capital One Platinum card. Oh. Oh. Get a new Capital One Platinum card with a 9.9% .9 fixed rate that starts low and stays low, plus no balance transfer fees. <laughs> What's in your wallet? Its ancestors knew the grid of the sand at Daytona, where a mile measured the length of your nerve. It is not meek. It is not humble. It is what happens when you take the soul of the past and meld it with the best of the new. Chrysler 300M, the most powerful car in its class. Now very well qualified returning gold key lessees can lease the 300M for $399 a month. Valvoline Halftime Show, brought to you by Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. From Times Square in New York, John Saunders and Terry Bowden. And welcome back. We'll hear from Terry in just a moment. Syracuse and Georgia Tech, two of the 117 Division I-A college football programs around the country. At those programs, over half the players are black. But of the 117 Division I-A college football programs, only five have African-American head coaches, leaving the black coach isolated, frustrated, and worse still, cheated. I've seen black coaches go through the process of doing things exactly like white coaches. You know, working hard, recruiting hard, doing all the same things. But when it comes time to promotion, you become invisible. It truly hurts to sit there and say, I didn't get the promotion because I'm black. That's all. There's a need to believe that as we move into this new millennium uh, that we're in, that uh, the opportunity for those that are very talented would exist. And today, I think we can honestly say the way um, the head coaches in Division 1A, African-American head coaches, reflects that we're not moving forward. And in many cases, we're moving backwards. And that's not good. Why have minority coaches been so systematically passed over? There are several theories. Many black coaches feel athletic directors are pressured by powerful alumni and boosters to keep the status quo, and perhaps to protect their own jobs, are afraid to hand the reins to an African-American coach. I've had an AD say to me that, uh, you know, I really would like to, to hire you, but I don't know if I can get it passed. If he's been coaching 20 years, is that qualified enough for you? Or does it have to be that your resume has a coordinator on it? What is that employer comfortable with? The reason why blacks are not considered, in part, is driven by race supremacy. The assumption that whites uh, and white males can do something other people cannot do. There's no talent deficit among black coaches. There's an opportunity deficit. Since 1979, there have been 362 openings at the head coaching position in Division 1A. Only 19 of those jobs went to black coaches. The overwhelming majority of those coaches were hired at schools with weak football tradition. Succeeding immediately at a school in need of massive rebuilding would be difficult enough, but each African-American coach bears the additional burden of being scrutinized as a representative of all black coaches. If we're not successful, I wasn't qualified. Uh, you know, unfortunately for black coaches, we're evaluated collectively. White coaches are most of the time evaluated individually. Dr. Clarence Underwood, athletic director at Michigan State, hired Bobby Williams, an African-American, as the Spartans head coach. Prior to becoming AD at Michigan State, Dr. Underwood spent years in administration and compliance, and he's been one of the few minority men to witness hiring decisions from behind closed doors. I think race was an issue in most of those interviews. It was never, uh, you know, re verbalized, but in a subtle way, no question about that. Uh, clearly that I felt that the blacks we interviewed uh, did not have an opportunity to be head coach. Amazingly, some of those administrators have hired African-American coaches in basketball and are very successful. 
So why is it that you can't find that very talented guy in football and give him that opportunity? When I come back, I sit down with Commissioner Roy Kramer of the SEC to discuss this problem and why we haven't seen more change. It's not for sale. No, 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 no. Some things are just too good to let go of. That's why there's Valvoline Max Life. The first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines, Max Life conditions use seals to help prevent leaks and helps you hold on to your car for a long, long time. Don't even think about it. Valvoline Max Life. Hi. Hi. You weren't about to eat that, were you? Um. No. You can order room service, you know, get a hamburger, salad, omelet, whatever you need, you know. Whatever, yeah, any of it. <laughs> Rock on, brother. <laughs> you get a room, we'll bring the food. Holiday Inn gives you more, and more is better. Over a century ago, Syracuse University students flocked to tiny Holden Observatory to marvel at the heavens. Today, that same sense of wonder and excitement is alive and well in classrooms across campus. Students and faculty are engaged in research in the sciences and humanities that is advanced even by today's standards. And our alumni, let's just say they're finding new ways to touch the stars. Syracuse University, believers in the art of becoming. We can find the best in sports, racing, and entertainment here in New Jersey. For 30 years, the New Jersey Sports and Exposition Authority has produced some of the best moments in sporting history for the enjoyment of all who travel to the Meadowland Sports Complex. Hi, this is Acting Governor Don DeFrancesco. Whatever you're looking for, it's waiting for you here in New Jersey. New Jersey and you, perfect together. Welcome back to the Valvoline Halftime Show. I'm John Saunders. Terry rejoins me in a moment. Of the 17 African Americans ever to hold a Division I-A college football head coaching job, none have been in the SEC. There were three openings in the SEC this summer. None went to an African American candidate. I sat down with Commissioner Roy Kramer to ask the question, why? You go back 10 years ago and you look at our schools. At best, we had a token and that usually was the wide receiver coach. And I'm just being bluntly honest with you. We had, we had staffs here that had none to start with. But, and but you've it, seen an enormous then, change in that in the last Essentially then, years. you're acknowledging that, that, it, that it's more of just a hiring practice, is that it's a racial issue. Because it, it, all things being equal, these coaches that have made their way up to be coordinators now and such are still being passed over for jobs right now. So it, I, you know, possibly. I wouldn't say they're not, but uh, uh, is there a, you know, but I think it's, 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 it's we're there. I'll tell you, there was, there was a day when you didn't see a coordinator anywhere in the country. And now you see it's not uncommon to see coordinators at all. Now, it, it's a step by step, and I know that's not what you'd like to see. You'd like to see it happen overnight. But what I see happening is, is the structure at the bottom is changing. And as that structure changes, then the, the structure at the top is going to change. I agree with you from the standpoint of you got to change it at the bottom before it changes at the right. top. The only problem I see right now is there are still people at the top pushing down and trying to hold well, it into that position. There, subconsciously, you may be correct. I think it's, it's, it's less today, John. It's far less today than it was five or six years ago because you've seen coaches in other sports succeed. It's, it, there's not that same image problem type of thing that's there. They're aware that they can, they can hire a minority coach and he may be very good, as we've seen in basketball, and he may not. He may fall flat on his face and they've got to replace him. So, so it's, it's less of that threatened uh, kind of a situation. Whether or not things change at the bottom, there are scores of black assistant coaches working now who have spent decades honing their skills and their resumes. Yet they still face an old excuse from the white power structure that a lack of a qualified candidate is to blame for the lack of black head coaches. Foolishness. It's an insult to suggest that somehow uh, blacks are not qualified to coach. 
it suggests that we are not, that we are inferior and whites are superior. That's classist racism. And Terry, we should point out, we did speak to the NCAA. They're going to put together a list of black assistants and distribute that to the member institutions. But they do point out, although it's a big priority, they cannot hire anyone. Here's a problem I see. Roy Kramer suggested that it's an image problem. Still today, an image problem to hire a black head coach, and that is ridiculous. John, commissioners and ADs are not going to solve this problem. College presidents who are responsible for issues of diversity need to solve by this problem by calling their ADs in saying, you can interview all the coaches you want, but you're going to hire a black coach. When a black recruit says, I'm going to Michigan State and not Michigan, I'm going to Stanford and not UCLA, you can bet we will start to see things change. Oh, man. Recruiting is the lifeblood of a college football program. When black athletes start seeking out black head coaches, John, it would make an immediate impact on this situation. And basically, it's time for all involved to just step up, do the right thing, and get this thing turned around. This is the Valvoline Halftime Show. Okay. Took care of the spark plugs, flushed the coolant, the brakes were shot, so I went ahead and took care of those, greased and lubed it, cleaned out the injectors, Replace the air filter, the fuel filter, rotate the tires, and change the oil. Thanks, honey. More ASC certified master technicians, the top mechanics in the country, use Valvoline motor oil in their own cars over any other oil. Did you take out the garbage? Sure did. Separated bottles from cans. One of the bags was leaking, so I double bagged that. And uh, the roof's gonna need some work. I can get to that next week. What will you do with 1,500 more minutes? 1,500 more nightly girl talks. 1,500 more good times to share. That means more scores to check out. Verizon Wireless now gives you 1,500 more night and weekend home airtime minutes free every month with an annual agreement on select digital plans of $35 and above. 1,500 more chances to get a date. 1,500 more emails. Even more good night kisses. You always get more from the largest wireless network in the nation. Verizon Wireless. Join in. The Valvoline Halftime Show, brought to you by Valvoline's Max Life, the first motor oil formulated for higher mileage engines. Saturday, ABC's college football triple header kicks off at noon with West Virginia Boston College or North Carolina Maryland, followed by Oklahoma Air Force or Colorado State Colorado. And at 8, it's Miami Penn State or Wisconsin Oregon. The runner and ultimate pursuit across the entire country. There he is, there he is. One runner at large somewhere in America with agents in hot pursuit. ABC needs runners. ABC needs agents. Uh, we lost them. Log on, abc.com, keyword runner. Sign up now. The runner coming to ABC. Coming up at 6.30 Eastern on ABC, the Little League World Series Championship. The little team that could from Apopka, Florida. Paced yesterday by 85-pound Brandon Brewer. Shocked the Bronx. His three-run homer set the way. And then later in the International Championship, Mokazuki in the sixth inning slammed a walk-off home run, and Japan bolted into the final against Florida. John, it should be a great game. Brandon, for the first time in primetime, we'll look at that. Well, I guess Tiger Woods, if he was in a slump, I guess it's over. He beats Jim Furyk today. Both finish at 12 under, and Tiger won on the seventh playoff hole with a birdie, his third straight title. Now, next Saturday, we have three split nationals for you, starting at noon, and at 3.30, Oklahoma and Air Force. In prime time, Miami at Penn State, Joe Paw trying to get back on the winning track. I tell you, Miami brings probably the nation's most talented team to State College, but Penn State will be ready. Joe Paterno never had losing back-to-back -back losing seasons in 35 years. That's next week. Right now, back to Brad. The pride of the Orange, the Syracuse University marching band. Their team down by 10 at halftime. An ABC Sports presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations.
When I told my agent I was playing fantasy sports, he got the wrong idea. I like it. Enjoy the show. <laughs> I would never do that. My fantasy league, unlike sports, is just good fun. I get the latest scores, player stats, even breaking news. Whatever you're into, dig into it deeper, unlike us. For men, every morning it's the same routine. The desperate search for a way to relieve the pain after shaving. Goodbye, babe. There's a better way to soothe your skin. New Nivea for Men Aftershave Balm is an advanced blend of moisturizers and vitamins that soothe and actually improve your skin. Nivea Aftershave Balm. More evolved skin care. Giants aim to return to championship four, while the Bronco running backs plan to carry Denver to the top of the heap. Monday Night Football, September 10th at 9, 6 Pacific on ABC. Safety, according to Jim. What happened to the screwdriver? No. Sure. Here. According to Jim, D-Day Wednesdays this fall on ABC. You guys hungry? Yeah, actually, yeah, I'll give me another uh, one of these. Two pretzels. Right. Uh, jalapenos, I'll take a No onions. Hey. Uh, there are some things in life you just don't want to miss. Like the Lexus Golden Opportunity, where until September 4th, you can get unbelievable values on all 2001 Lexus vehicles. Miss it, and you'll never forgive yourself. Unbelievable. At your Atlanta area Lexus dealer. Atlanta, satisfy your craving for cheeseburgers with McDonald's new one, two, three cheese values. One, now you can get our classic cheeseburger for only 59 cents. Outrageous. Two, our double cheeseburger is just 79 cents. Three, our triple cheeseburger, only 99 cents. Cheese. One, two, three, cheese. Head to McDonald's now for our 99 cent real McDeal everyday values. Featuring the irresistible big and tasty burger, just 99 cents every day. Get ready for big savings and the lowest finance rate ever on Ford's biggest SUVs, Expedition and Excursion. During Ford's authorized clearance, you can save up to $10,250 with 0% financing for five full years. That's 0%. But hurry, this offer ends August 31st. Get ready for big savings during Ford's authorized clearance. Save money with Clark Howard Prime Time, Wednesday on Channel 2. Ten nothing at Giant Stadium, Georgia Tech, leading Syracuse in the kickoff classic 2001. Brad Nestler and Bob Greasy back with you. And, you know, we saw a little bit of it yesterday with Nebraska. They struggled with TCU. This Georgia Tech team doesn't look like a national championship contender right now either. Brad, I've been around college and pro football for 34 years. And if it's August, <laughs> the defense is ahead of the offense. Boy, they have and been so far. And that's where we are. The opening drives by both teams were pretty good. Following that, the offenses haven't done anything. There's one of Dwight Freeney's two sacks. Noons threw this one. Marvius Hester took it back to the six. Joe Burns capped a six-yard drive. That's how hard they had to work to get it in the end zone. And then Noons took this shot from Chris Young right under the kisser. That's the way the defense has played today. Let's check in with Lynn Swan. Swanee. Well, thank you, Brad. George O'Leary came out and he said, what we need to do offensively is try and run the ball. So don't look for him to change up a whole lot. He wants to establish some kind of run game. And then he says he wants to make sure that Gatsi is going to get more one-on-one -on -one shots to Campbell, which worked for him so well in the first half. But his real concern was, well, you know what I'm going to say. Number 54, <laughs> Dwight Freeney. Yeah. How do you stop him? He said, somebody in our offensive line or a couple of people have to step up and keep that guy off Gatsi's back. He hasn't well, spent much time in that position. <laughs> the feeling today. I get is, is O'Leary would like to have him on his side. You're not kidding. <laughs> he and Gathers and Rogers would be a nice trio. Oh it? boy! The kick takes Maurice Jackson deep. Monjay knocked it in the end zone for the touchbacks of Syracuse. Will work from its own 20-yard line. Statistically, in the first half, the total yardage looks pretty good. 
for Georgia Tech in the passing yardage but look at that anemic ground game that's 21 yards and Joe Burns had to carry it 14 times for 16 yards and hey, that's not much for offensive stats right there three trips in the red zone 10 points for Georgia Tech one trip in there for Syracuse and they missed a chip shot field goal which is part of their problems last year let's see how they do in their opening March third quarter Make the handoff to Mungro. This is Noons on the option. He'll keep it again. Tough kid. Got about eight or nine. And he's going to be slow to get up again, I think. I wonder what they call that play. That was the same play they ran earlier where he runs around the end and he picks up one of the wide receivers as an option to toss the ball to. I think it's truck and trailer because every time he runs out there, he thinks he got hit by a truck, even though he didn't pitch to the trailer. Wimbush is the guy that got him this time. There's the pitch man. Well, this one didn't look as bad. Just maybe landed on the ball. I think. I think. Watching when he's on the ground, when he's on the ground, well, you can't see it. I think somebody lands on his foot, his right ankle. So same play and uh, very similar results for Troy Noons. A lot of things. He could have fallen on the ball, and they're not looking at his ankle. He had the. Uh, Ball, you're going to see it do kind of a bounce down underneath him and come right back up in the solar plexus right oh, there. Yeah. Poop. That, oh yeah, that's for sure. Right on your chest. Let's check in with Lynn. Oh, Brett and Bob, when I was at USC, John McKay ran this play to a to a halfback we had there, and, and he got his knee busted up. Came back and called the same play uh, play again, and Sam Cunningham, our fullback, got his knee busted up. You know what happened to that play? <laughs> Went out the it window. was out of the playbook <laughs> for the rest of the season. I think for the second time today. Noon's got the wind knocked out of him. You saw him holding his chest. Right now, that football's got 13 psi, and Troy's only got about nine in his lungs. So he'll walk off, and R.J. Anderson will come back in. R.J. comes into a better spot this time. The last time he came in, <laughs> it was a third down and long, and they sent the house after him. This time, it's second down and a yard. Syracuse had the ball five possessions in the first half. They punted the ball three times, missed a field goal on their first drive, and had an interception. Another major shift. Finally set up with two wideouts, including Riddle wide to the left side. Now he'll go back in motion toward the ball. Inside handoff, big opening for the fullback. And a penalty marker down as Kyle Johnson went out to the 37-yard line. Let's see what the flag's about. The illegal shift. They had a lot of shifting going on, yeah. a little bit too much. All that movement by Syracuse does not seem to be affecting or confusing the defense for Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech hasn't moved much when no. they've done all that, yeah. have they? Foul was illegal shift by the offense. Penalty is five yards from the previous spot. Repeat the second out. Now, there's not a lot that you say in the huddle. Uh, what you do is you call the in formation that you want to line up in. So in the huddle, I might say mix to trips right. So if you know you got to be trips right, you might line up on the other side and then go over to the other side. So you want to you want to change sides usually, but just call the in formation. Noon's back in there after one play out and wide open down the middle is Noah Jackson. And Jackson's got it to the 47 yard line of Georgia Tech a 29 yard pass play the first big play in a long time for the Syracuse Orangemen Jackson right down the middle of the field nice protection noons that's a good play throws a little bit onto the outside of him and uh, Jackson shifts around only 5 8 and makes a nice catch and into Georgia Tech territory inside the 47 yard line. <laughs> Again. <laughs> Nobody on the defense is moving, though. <laughs> now Mungro takes a step up behind Noons, a single setback. Going to be a quick throw, and Jackson, tough catch. Great spin move, trying to get away. And he got seven or eight yards out of it. Well, I mentioned he's only 5'8", weighs 169 pounds. He's got all the speed. Run the reverses with him, and he makes the big plays. Top of your screen, just a little stop route. There's one Look guy missed. Another guy missed. <laughs> Looked like a politician avoiding a straight answer. 
pretty elusive. Uh, <laughs> Pulled a condon on us down there. Boy. Second down a long yard. <laughs> well, you've been had all summer to work on these <laughs> lines, huh? <laughs> Connie Chung called me with that one. Yeah. Second a long yard. And Mungro's got a first down. Had to work hard for it. Follow his blockers inside the 35. De'Aaron Fox made the tackle, but James Mungro, the senior tailback, picks up the first, and Syracuse has got something working here. It's from behind the defense. Hey, Bob Brad, I, you know, I'm, you're talking about all this motion and stuff. Bob, I'm just wondering if that doesn't force the defense just to stay in something simple, which makes it for an easier read for the quarterback. I think first game, Swanee, they didn't know what to expect, and so I think they came in defensively saying we're not going to do much. Nunes, again, he's going to keep it, and again, he gets planted. Daryl Smith. Boy, Smith shows some excellent speed from that middle linebacker position. He's, he does. He really does. Freshman All-American last year. Bob said earlier, led the team in tackles. Plays off the block and wraps him up for a loss of about three. There's his numbers from last year. Only a sophomore out of Albany, Georgia. Or as the folks there call it, Albany. Yeah, he was a um, he was an outstanding player in high school and a top recruit. And has continued on his good play in college. Second down, long 12. Looked like the tight end or the left tackle came out of his stance, and I think it was Pat Alexander, the captain, who's an All-American type candidate at left tackle, just came out of his stance a little too early. Illegal procedure, Syracuse. Yeah, the coaches uh, talk very highly about Alexander, saying his real position should be center, center but yeah. he's moved out to left tackle. Number 69 there on the end of the line. Played center a couple of years ago, and they think NFL-wise, he could be maybe a high draft choice at the center spot if he moves back in there at the next level. So now they're going the wrong way. Second down and 17. Four wideout grouping for Troy Nunes. Has time. Deep middle. Got it. Inside the 25, and I've spin. Down to the 15 yard line, David Tyree. 28 yard pickup. So Nicely. Nunes has gone 27 yards to Jackson, now 28 yards to Tyree. Nicely done. Good job by the offensive line, giving me a little protection. Nunes finds his receiver. I was looking downfield, and he was the only one open, was Tyree, and he got him the ball. Swanee said he makes pretty good decisions. That was the best decision there. Now here's a toss to Mungro. Trying to get a blocker. Broke one tackle. Run out of bounds after maybe a yard pickup. Chris Young and Jeremy Myers from the secondary for Georgia Tech up to make the stop. James Mungro highly touted as he came to Syracuse. And they've expected big things out of him. George DeLeon said the other day, you know what? He's out of years. Yeah. He's got to do it now. That's right. It's emergency. He's a good player. Eighth play of the drive. And a second down and nine. Both wideouts trot out to the right side. Campbell's out there with Tyree. Inside give. Johnson down to the five. Penalty markers, though. At the line of scrimmage. And Kyle might have had his second good run negated by penalty, depending on which way this one goes. He had one earlier in this drive. Johnson separated, uh, dislocated his ankle last year. It is motion. And again, it'll yeah. go against Syracuse. Johnson got a sixth year, which he was delighted for. Yep. One of the captains on this team and also uh, quite an actor, I guess. I guess so. An awfully sharp young man and talking to him yesterday. Yeah, very impressive. He had a good start going to that game against Buffalo last year in the opener before that injury. Offense was not set prior to the snap. Five yards from the previous spot. Still second down. So on this drive they've had an illegal shift and then that time not set before the snap. But that's what a lot of that motion does to you sometimes. And a lot of it's coming on the offensive side of the ball and the offense you know you just. It's tough enough to go against a defense without stopping yourself. And it's second down at 14. Nine, 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 nine. 
Blitz coming from the safety spot. Noon's got to get rid of it. Middle screen to Mungro. <laughs> he nice left stiff his, arm. He, oh. left, he left his blockers. He ran to the left side. All of his blockers were over on the right. He tried to stiff arm Chris Young. I don't think there was anybody for him to block. Everybody was blitzing. Yeah, there were a lot of bees coming up the middle. Yeah, all, this, all the orange guys are going to the right, and he <laughs> heads off to the left. Ran into Young, and then the cleanup. Wonder if he's colorblind. Like <laughs> Gary Johnson. Third down now and long. Third and 12. Nunes fires across the middle. Completes it. And might be a face mask at the end of that play. I think. <laughs> Riddle made the catch, and then it got all turned around by Keith Fox. There's a lot of laundry out there. There's four or five flags laying on the ground. I think there's a fox in the hen house on that one. Got his hand in the face mask, I believe. Yep. He would have been stopped way, way short of the first down. Yeah. There's another look. Not an intentional thing, but he held on. He didn't let go, did he? Nope. Whether he couldn't get it out of there or by design, he gives Syracuse a first down by penalty and his first and goal. So Syracuse try to work their way back into this thing. They only trail by 10, nine and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Two tight end set for the Orange. Not first and goal at the Georgia Tech seven. to the end zone Kyle Johnson Syracuse is not uh, fooling around by going with that option around the end and those two ends for Georgia Tech everything off the option it seems to be inside Kyle Johnson told us yesterday if I can make it to the end zone of my first game back and my sixth year of eligibility you don't even know how that would feel I don't know if they'll give it to him here but he's gotten them close second down at the one yard line the give and the touchdown it's a good thing they didn't give it to Johnson he got peppered and Nunes <laughs> took it in so the guy that's been beaten up all day on those option keepers keeps it again and this time it pays off for Troy Nunes he's in the end zone Extra point away from a three-point ball game. Well, they almost dropped the football. Looked like maybe he was trying to give it to Johnson, and Johnson knocked him forward. Here comes the old swinging gate as they'll bring the group over for the extra point. They have some plays uh, lined uh, designed where that swinging gate stays over there, and they'll run one. That's why they do it initially. Schaefer for the point after. Snaps a little wide. The kick was ugly, but it's good. Ooh, ugly is right. They cut it to a field goal, though. Noon's got blasted by his fullback. It might have been just enough force to send him to the end zone. 10-7. Tammy's blind date. I'm Spike, her twin brother. Twin brother, twin brother, twin brother, twin brother. Tammy, your date's here. Hey, can I offer you a Bud Light? Sure. Here you go. Hi. Hi. For the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Mmm. You smell good.
a great car at a great rate. Call or click Thrifty. For your chance to win a ride in an Indy car and an all-access pass to next year's Indy 500, watch the Delphi Automotive Indy 300 next Sunday live at 4 Eastern on ABC. 80 tough yards in 11 plays, and Noons did the final yard. Bob, and I'm still not sure about that play. Well, if you want to have a drive to come out the second half, this is what you want, the 80 yards. Now watch the ball right there. You're going to see it being knocked loose, and there's the fullback, Johnson. He's going back the other way. The, the middle linebacker hit him. Designed, I think, Ooh. designed to go to the fullback. The ball came loose, and Ooh. Newton's just said, I'm going to do it myself. Or maybe he saw the, the middle linebacker coming and said, One of the no, two. No. One of the two. I don't want to give it to you. At any rate, he's earned the respect of his teammates today, I'll tell you, with the shots he's taken. And he got him in the end zone. And he now was, Justin Sajanski to kick off. Noons was 5 of 5 on the drive and hit four different receivers. So he came out, second half, and took him down. Sajanski's kick. Kelly Campbell from the five. And a nice job on the special teams to drop Campbell at the 20. Diamond Ferry down there on the special teams makes a big hit. Our Morgan Stanley well-connected storyline. Syracuse 50 yards rushing. Noons is, Bob said, perfect in that drive. Good for 70 of their 80 yards. Georgia Tech, Kelly Campbell's had a big game. That's about it, though. George Gotze has cooled off. He's 9 of 17, but he'll bring the Ramblin' Wreck up to its own 21-yard line right here. Perfect marks for Syracuse. That's exactly what they needed. We got a ball game. Three-pointer. Tech still trying to run and still unable to. Joe Burns, no game. Mark Holtzman. Kind of an electrifying <laughs> tackle by the tackle. Swanee, this guy's a little bit off, isn't he? <laughs> well, what a yeah. setup. Yeah, well, I'm telling you, we're going to have to call him Taser as a nickname. And uh, if we can, I'll tell you the story after this play. All right. Second down and nine. In fact, it's all of ten. There was no game there. Gotzi, play fake. Got a man open. Got him out across the 40. To the 45 yard line is Kelly Campbell again. Okay, so let's talk about Mark Holtzman, which we're going to call Taser. His father is a deputy police chief. Called him in one day, said, You know, we got one of these Taser guns, son, and we want to test it. Shot his son with the Taser gun. It didn't work the first time. <laughs> they shot him again the second time. It worked 50,000 votes, dropped him. Hits to apprehend criminals in, the, in a, a, a more harmless fashion. But boy, your own son. Yeah, that's the kind of dad you want, huh? <laughs> At the 41, quick slant, Campbell again. And Campbell's on his way maybe to a 200-yard receiving day before this one's all over. I like the setup on that. You go down, you go to Swatty with, hey, man, what an electrifying guy. <laughs> oh, boy. There's Mark, and he's he's a good one. He's up for... Fifth year senior. Here, fifth year senior. One of those leaders on the defense. He's a Lombardi candidate. Nagurski candidate. you got to be a tough guy to get 50,000 volts blasted through you by your own father. Seven receptions, 153 yards for Kelly Campbell. Whoa! Burns almost didn't get the handoff from Godsey. And he's not going anywhere. Willie Ford just bulldogs him out of bounds. There's a stretch play that was stretched a little too wide. I didn't think Godsey had a long enough arm to get it there. Well, there's a point in time where you got to turn it upfield and just cut your losses. I think Godsey didn't come back far enough he went too wide but uh, you know, that's a loss of uh, three or four yards brings up third down at five yeah. Georgia Tech in its own 46 seven minutes left in the third and now Tech shifts with their two tight end set Syracuse thinking about a blitz they're going to bring it from the corner Gotzi got rid of it incomplete he had Campbell on a crossing pattern. It might have been a big gainer, but Josh Thomas got to Godsey just when the goose let go. Yeah, he couldn't hold it any longer. He did a nice job, and I think the concerns of George O'Leary going into the game about his health have been answered because he's been hit, knocked, and pounded. Ooh. Look at that. Josh Thomas with a big shot from his defensive end spot on a little bit of a stunt. Dan Dyke to kick Malik Campbell. 
is back in punt return formation. He had a school record 32 punt returns last year. He waits on this one. Late fair catch call. And now the ball pops loose. His own man ran into him, then a Georgia Tech player. I don't see a flag. And I think they're just going to blow it dead right there and let bygones be bygones. I think. But it was a late fair catch signal. It's just a first down. I guess they ruled he was down before he fumbled. Yep. So Syracuse has the ball back. They trail by a field goal. You hear it at 743 Hickory Street. You hear it above the din. Hey, come again, man. You hear it among the quiet. It's the sound of Culligan water being delivered to your door. Your Culligan man's got a great introductory price of just $9.95 a month. Call 800 Culligan or visit Culligan.com today. your resume now monster.com you the monster with a car this old you expect some miles on the clock but this one has over a million in a real test model one it equaled 40 laps around the world then they tore down the engine and many of the parts even the piston rings were almost like new after a million miles you want your car to last use mobile one and I figure you'll wear out your seats before you wear out your engine. Nothing outperforms Mobile One. As we look in, our aerial views courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company overhead is Goodyear's Blimp Stars and Stripes, continuing a 76 year tradition of making appearances at major sporting events like this kickoff classic that now is tightened up. 10 7, the play that went to break, as we showed you on that punt return. You're going to see the knee down of Campbell. He's going to have late, late fair catch signal, but he's got possession Pump. and the knee is down. Yep. The play's dead right there. Yeah. So that's where they work, just inside their own 20 yard line. And after putting together an 80 yard drive to open the third quarter, they've got it right back. And a chance to take it down the field and tie or lead. Noons drops into the gun. Keep it on the ground on the inside handoff. Right across the 20 to the 21 goes Mungro. Georgia Tech's had to change up its secondary a little bit down there, Lynn. They're trying to get down to Swanee. He's telling us about the change in the secondary and the reason for it. Young, uh, number 33. Normally, the strong safety has moved out to the corner because of the injury. Hamstring injury to Hester. Marvius Hester, who had the interception that led to the tech touchdown. Swanee says is nursing a hamstring, so they shift some people in that defensive backfield. Late blitz coming. Noon's got rid of it. Would have been a tough catch thrown behind David Tyree. And Corey Collins, the guy that's playing safety with Chris Young having moved to corner, is the man that made the play. And that's the thing you hate to see about this is that. The receiver, the route was there. The receiver was open, and the quarterback just didn't get him the ball. He just threw it a little bit behind him because he had to throw it maybe a little bit before he wanted to also. Third down's been tough for the Orange today. Third and eight here, and they've missed on their last six third down conversions. in trouble got away from one throws on the run and it's out of bounds incomplete gathers is the guy that finally tracked him but it was Daryl Smith that put on the initial heat that Noons had to bail out of 
Good job by the defense. Georgia Tech coming in, shutting them down three and out. Good field position probably for Georgia Tech. Fourth time Syracuse has been three and out today. Schaefer to kick. Tech has put very little pressure on him today. They've had the return set up every time. Same story here. Kind of a high lazy kick and Georgia Tech will just try to get out of the way of this one as it's going to roll out of bounds at about the 46 yard line. So as Bob said Georgia Tech will have good field position offensively when we come back they lead by three. You've worked hard and as you plan for the future of the people who depend on you you search for the right financial partner in Pacific Life you found it nearly half the fortune 500 rely on the Pacific Life family of companies. With over 130 years of experience and more than $300 billion of managed assets. For your family or for business, discover the power of Pacific Life. It takes a special event for some guys to get rid of their gray hair. But for other guys, every day of their life is special. And they live it with Just For Men. More than a hair color, it's a hair rejuvenator. Just for Men gets rid of gray in five easy minutes. Its vitamin-enriched formula brings back a thicker, healthier, natural look. Every day of your life is special. Live it with Just for Men. Big stuff is going on here at 7-Eleven. This is the new Big Sub Combo. Choose an Italian Big Sub sandwich. Three kinds of meat and provolone cheese. Or smoked turkey with Swiss. Plus a big gulp and a big grab of chips. It's a bigger, better summer. Does anyone here at the Beef and Bird Barbecue Cook-Off use a gas grill? Gas is a no-no, definitely a no-no. So when it comes to flavor... Proven fact that charcoal is better than gas. What kind of charcoal? Oh, Kingsford, definitely. Kingsford. Seriously? 100%. Kingsford charcoal, because taste is everything. Spy for what? Against who? You can't tell anyone about this. I'm not kidding. Alias, Sundays this fall on ABC. This guy's done his homework. Marlon Greenwood, former great linebacker, and now he's liking Clifton Smith, who went to the same high school as Marlon. And you and I were down in Miami last week. The Dolphins love Marlon Greenwood. They drafted him in the third round, and he uh, injured him as a foot. Wanstead, Dave Wanstead said he'd be starting for us right now had he not injured, injured his foot. From the 46, Gotsy play action through the out. Campbell's got it. Another 11-yard pickup. Another catch for Kelly Campbell. And he continues to put up some impressive numbers in his season opening game. He's got 164 yards on eight catches. As we told you earlier, he's already put himself on top of the Georgia Tech record books in career receiving. Pasqualoni was talking about putting a double coverage in, covered, put some coverage over towards him. But uh, as long as they don't get on the scoreboard, that defense is doing a pretty good job of uh, containing. Burns finally got a little bit of room to run. That's his best run of the day. Netted him about six yards. Keenan Walker is there with Scanlon, the linebacker, to make the hit. They list him at Joe Burns at 5'10. He doesn't look like he's 5'10. <laughs> 205 pounds. Had over 900 yards on the ground last year. After a season that was lost the previous year to injury. Play action. Gotsy. Deep ball. Under through his intended receiver, Kelly Campbell. Had he put that where it had to be, it probably would have been a touchdown. Well, the pressure, I don't know if it came from Freeney or from Thomas on the other side, but it was, if he would have had time to throw, this is what you see down there. Throw it outside into the middle, down the field. He could have outrun the defensive back, but uh, might have been Gashlin, 99. Yeah, yeah yep. Gashlin. So third down. Georgia Tech leading by a very small field goal. That's a nice play by Gashlin because that's that's a, that could have been a touchdown. Yep. Defensive linemen get very little credit. Interior linemen, especially. Five-man front for Syracuse trying to bring some pressure. Godsey throwing for Campbell again. Diving attempt incomplete. 
Jeremiah Mason staying with Kelly Campbell pretty well. Yeah, yep. penalty marker in the backfield. Did they hit him late? Yep. Good call. From behind the defense. This is a good throw. It's right where it needs to be. Where only his receiver could catch it, but not quite. Yep. It is a late hit on Syracuse defense. Josh Thomas. Yeah, that's that's a tough one because that would have foul was a personal foul. Back the passer by the defense. Now 15 yards. Yeah, see, that was a third down play. It would have been fourth yep. down. It's like a turnover. You give the ball back and let him try it again. See, 97 Thomas. Oh, and he got sandwiched from the other side, too. It was yeah. two guilty parties there, Holtzman and Thomas. Yeah. So, first down, Georgia Tech at the Syracuse 23. Burns inside the 20 to the 19. Got about four. Holtzman and Dumas combined on the stop. And we're working our way down to the four minute mark in the third quarter. Georgia Tech coming in, ranked 13th in the country. And try to hold on to a field goal lead against unranked Syracuse, a team that went six and five last year, four and three in the Big East. And I don't think a lot of people gave Syracuse a lot of credit. Nope. They're playing a lot better than a lot of people thought they would. Quentin Harris holding on to Joe Burns as Joe almost got a first down on that run. It'll be about a yard shot. Like I say, I think if Syracuse gets their quarterback situation straightened out and they get consistent play, they can be a factor in the Big East. Right there with Miami and also Virginia Tech. Smith and Watkins, the wide receivers. You'd expect Tech to keep this on the ground in the third and one, though, and they do, and Burns just puts his head down, and that time, that's tough running. Whatever Joe Burns' size is, that time he earned his keep. First down, Georgia yeah. Tech. The offensive line, Schmidgall and Blake and Riley up front, Bennett, Kimball, doing a nice job of just putting hat on hat and letting Burns find a gap. Remember, Syracuse has only given up two touchdown passes in now the last 27 quarters. And Tech will keep it on the ground to Burns, close to the five. That's a long stretch of time without giving up that many aerial tosses in the end zone. They've and, done a good job. And got to, and Georgia Tech threw 23 touchdown passes last year. That's over, uh, a little over two touchdown passes a game. You'd think they'd send Campbell out there and just throw him one on one. Second and goal at the six. Burns. Nope. Check in with Swanee. Well, Brad, the number and the person you haven't called in this drive for a while now is Dwight Freeney, number 54. He's not on the field, he's not on the sideline. He's in the locker room getting an IV. He started to cramp up. You remember we were talking to him in the interview he talked about not drinking soda trying to have an injury free season where he had to go in because he was cramping up he should be coming back out but that's a report from the Syracuse bench he's out there right now he just got back up it's one on one out there Campbell at the top of your screen third down and five late shift burns on the give a yard or two, and it's fourth down. And George Godsey looks to the sideline to Coach O'Leary. Are they going to go for it here again? Nope. George just made the foot motion to bring out the field goal unit. You know what you got here? You got George O'Leary, who is a tough guy, run it in type of guy. And and then you, you don't have Ralph Friedgen any longer. Ralph Friedgen was there forever, yep. and liked the, all these uh, in, imaginative ideas, throw the ball, and how to get it in. But I think George is dominating with his conservative calls on running plays. Luke Monjay knocks in a 20 yard field goal. So it gives Georgia Tech three more, but their coach is not happy. He gave his offense an earful when they came off the field. So Monjay's second field goal of the day. He had a 22 yarder earlier. That one's a 20 yarder. And with 121 remaining in the third quarter. Yeah, he's got the three, but he's not happy. 13-7. And I don't blame him. 
But see, he's a defensive guy, and it's early. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, it's, like I say, it's August. You know, in the offense, it takes, offense is timing. Defense is aggression and recognition and hitting. And it takes a little longer for the offense to get everything going. So we've got 121 remaining in the third quarter. Maj will tee it up, and Mungro Campbell will go back deep to receive. Uh, excuse me, Maurice Jackson and Mungro back deep. Offenses have had to earn everything that they've come up with today, that's for sure. Manjay has kicked. Mo Jackson from the one. And he is buried at about the 16 yard line. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Bud Light for the great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. Wrangler, real comfortable jeans. And Pacific Life annuities, insurance, investments. Discover the power of Pacific Life. New York City, in our view, we're in the Meadowlands, East Rutherford, New Jersey, at Giant Stadium for the kickoff classic. Brad Nessler, Bob Greasy, Lynn Swan, and our ABC crew on what is a six game college football weekend to get things going for 2001. And in this one, it's 13 7, the rambling wreck of Georgia Tech leading Syracuse. This is the backup tailback Diamond Ferry. Ferry got about four. They did a nice job of getting this uh, field ready to play. The Giants and the Jets played here last night. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't want to spend a lot of time between those hash marks, though, if you were really looking for some plush grass. Yeah, that's, that's, <laughs> that's for sure. I think they're going to have to bring out the pallets this week and put some new stuff in here. Second and six. Both wideouts trot out to the near side. An eye backfield and a play fake. Nunes throws on the run. Got a man open. Jackson. And Jackson again trying to break a tackle. Staying with him, though. Albert Poirier, the corner. And number one tackles number one, but it's a pickup of 13. I like uh, Troy Nunes uh, getting outside the pocket. Moving the ball, you've got to mix some passing in there. I mentioned earlier, Syracuse normally gets it done on the running uh, running game on the ground. 18th in the nation last year in run offense, 92nd in the nation through the air. So Noon's doing a nice job of mixing it in. Here comes a late blitz. He goes over the middle and he got his man again. Might be a first down. Johnny Morant. Chris Young made the tackle. But in the waning seconds here of the third quarter, Troy Noons put that one right on the money, too. Looking to the sideline for the play, and there's Troy's numbers, and those aren't shabby at all. Had that one misfire that Hester intercepted that helped Tech score a touchdown. But the third quarter's come to a close, and he's got his Syracuse offense moving again. Paul Pasqualoni says good job, gives him a pat on the rear end, and the third quarter's come to a close. Tough ball game for both teams. They've had to fight for everything they've gotten. 13 to 7. ABC Sports presentation of college football will continue after this message and a word from our ABC stations. At 25, I wanted to make vice president. At 35, I wanted to make my first million. At 45, I wanted to make enough to buy the company. Now all I want is to make it around this track two-tenths of a second faster. At Lincoln Financial Group, we provide clear, understandable, customized solutions to help you manage, protect, and enjoy the work of a lifetime. Lincoln Financial Group. Clear solutions in a complex world. same routine. The desperate search for a way to relieve the pain after shaving. Goodbye, babe. There's a better way to soothe your skin. 
new Nivea for Men aftershave balm is an advanced blend of moisturizers and vitamins that soothe and actually improve your skin. Nivea aftershave balm, more evolved skin care. Florida's home run power derailed the Bronx Baby Bombers. Now they go for the World Championship, the Little League World Series presented by Honda. Today, live at 6.30 Eastern on ABC. Horsepower Nissan Pathfinder. Get ready for big savings and the lowest finance rate ever on Ford's biggest SUVs, Expedition and Excursion. During Ford's authorized clearance, you can save up to $10,250 with 0% financing for five full years. That's 0%. But hurry, this offer ends August 31st. Get ready for big savings during Ford's authorized clearance. Don't miss the Georgia Tech Post Game Show right after the game on Channel 2. That's Ted Roof, Georgia Tech's defensive coordinator. As Bob mentioned earlier, back in the mid 80s, a heck of a linebacker on that black watch defense of a Georgia Tech team coached by our buddy Bill Curry. But he just not only got his starters around him during that quarter break, he brought the whole defense in a huddle out around him and gave him a little pep talk. Let's see if it works. Syracuse has a first down to start the fourth quarter as they trail by six. Just inside the 43 yard line. Nunes with time running out, sidearmed it out, trying to get it out. The Diamond Ferry, and it's incomplete. Errol Smith got some late pressure on Nunes, and he had to sidearm that thing out of there. That'll bring up second and 10. Paul Pasqualoni, 81 wins in his 11th season now. And he was there. He was an assistant coach there for like four years yep. before. So he's got 15 years at the school. Named the head coach in '91. And a second down, 10. Georgia Tech showing blitz and bringing it. Nunes over the middle completes it. And a swarm of Yellow Jackets around the ball carrier or their wide receiver, David Tyree. It'll bring up third and long. It's a little bit surprising I think to a lot of people that uh, Georgia Tech is not running away with this game because yep. they were the one with the offense that came in and their offense has really uh, been shut down for the most part by Syracuse defensively. Third down at seven. They pull the shift and bring all three receivers to the near side. Great rush by Georgia Tech. Nunes rolls and throws and throws a dart again. Now the spot's going to be important here. I think he's going to be just short. Me too. I think it's about the length of the football. But we'll wait and see. Poiré brought down the receiver. And our referee's going to bring the chain gang out, I think. You talk about our first and ten presented by Pontiac. That's giving you a pretty good look right there. But we that, officially yeah. will bring those yeah. little links in the chain yeah. out here to make sure that yellow line is just an approximation. It's not an exact uh, science or and just to give you an idea at home about where the first down is. We said the length of the football short about that much. Maybe just between the stripes on the ball short. I like that yellow line. I like uh, I think that's one of the great new innovations in football. So it's fourth down. And Syracuse will go for it in Georgia Tech territory here in the fourth quarter. Big play right here. The game could swing on this one. 
Uh, see, will Noons try to yeah. draw a tech yeah. offside? Yeah. Or? Then, yeah, this, if they go for it, this is a gutsy call. I mean, Syracuse is the underdog coming into the ball game. They've got a veteran offensive line, a lot of fifth-year seniors out there. He's going to quarterback sneak. I don't know, Bob. I don't know. I don't know. That is going to be as close, if not closer, than the next, the last spot, I think. Those guys are going to get a workout. Chain's going to have to come back <laughs> jogging in from the far side yeah. again. They don't want anybody touching that ball. If he got it, he got it by about an inch. Yeah, this was a gutsy call by Paul on the sideline over there. By that much. Yeah. Wow. And who really knows? And who knows, yeah, exactly. Because, uh, you know, you dive into a pile and some uh, linesman comes over in from the side. And he you puts talk his about foot. an inexact science. Oh, yeah. Put your right <laughs> foot down, <laughs> left foot down, you know, but you hope that in the end, you know, you, they all come out even. But uh, gutsy call. So they keep it alive. A touchdown would give them the lead. They're in Georgia Tech territory at the 48. Nunes fires high and incomplete intended for Joe Donnelly as tight end. And Corey, the cornerback, back there helping out with Wimbush, the linebacker. Yeah, Wimbush on the left, on the right side of the screen, really got the coverage. And uh, there was three guys downfield, and they were all covered. He threw it the only place he could get. The only thing, <laughs> the only thing Troy was say, give me a faster guy. I had a linebacker. He was on a linebacker, for goodness sakes. So second down and 10, just inside the Georgia Tech 48. Ninth play of the Syracuse drive, and we're still playing around midfield here. Inside handoff. Barry, about five. It'll bring up third and five. Wimbush again in on the tackle and Ferry a little bit slow to try to get to his feet. Gets a little help from one of his linemen. There was a collision down there. It sure was. Wimbush is number 42. I think that's who's going to hit him. Oh, right man. there. He's hit in on the last two plays. Wimbush is a true junior. He started every game at Georgia Tech. He started 25 games in a row. That was a helmet knocker. In fact, it knocked Ferry's helmet off, and Mungro comes back in to flank Noons in the shotgun. Troy rolls left wide open. First down is Kyle Johnson. Their captain keeps the drive alive with a big catch. Nice catch by uh, Kyle Johnson, the sixth-year graduate student, the actor, the captain. We mentioned he was injured in the first game last year and missed the whole season. That's a nice catch. Reaching up, keeping your feet, make, making the first down. We asked George DeLeon how much it meant to get him back for his sixth year, and he said talent-wise, yes, but character and emotional heart of the team, we needed him bad. We were talking to him yesterday, and he almost started crying on camera. I want to know, was he acting, or was, that, <laughs> was he really getting that emotional? At the 35, first down, Syracuse. Nunes fakes the end around. Now he goes back to the man he faked it to. Well, a lot of play in there, but Shouldn't good done staying home by <laughs> Jeremy Myers. And now Noons is shaky again. A man, Troy, is going to be set a record for the most time the medical staff would have to come out to attend to you. It's a fake reverse, and then he's going to throw it back to him. There was nobody else downfield. I was looking downfield, and that's not where he wanted to go with it. For the number one, I think he, another receiver was jammed and didn't get downfield. They actually lost a yard. It's second down and 11. Noon's quick one, tipped in the air, trying to throw a slant. Jeremy Myers, who made the last tackle, also made that play. Troy's down in the crouch again. That's the top of your screen. Myers coming in just unblocked does a nice job of uh, in anticipating Troy uh, down on his stooping down in between plays here late. Looking for some extra gas in the tank I think third down and 11. Over the middle's got a man open it's tipped at the line again. 
This time, I think it was Fred Wright that got a big yeah, paw on the and, way. And he had a man open, crossing route. That's partly the quarterback's fault and partly offensive line. The quarterback needs to look away and then get the ball over the line of scrimmage before. It's the offensive lineman's fault if they don't keep contact. So you need to stay, keep contact with the defensive man so he can't jump. So Schaefer now right at the midfield stripe. Kelly Rado back at the 10 yard line. Schaefer high wide snap and not a good kick off the side of his foot. But he gets a great bounce. It's gonna be all right though. A really great bounce. Out of bounds at the one and a half. Sometimes <laughs> the ugliest of kicks can be a thing of beauty, huh? 13-7 Georgia Tech, but they're in a tough spot on offense when we come back. When the advantage is yours, it's only polite to give the competition a head start. Acceleration tests, Bonneville dominates the passing lane. And now it comes with an offer you won't want to pass up. Bonneville, luxury with attitude. More ASC certified master technicians, the top mechanics in the country, use Valvoline more than any other oil in their own cars. Kenny, come to bed. And for cars with over 75,000 miles, there's Max Life. You ready for a cold one? Yeah. It's cold, but it's not Coors Light. Coors Light. Tasty. Now that's really interesting. So where's the key? This is really gonna hurt. Hannibal. Rent or buy it today. Depend only on yourself, and then make yourself occasionally unavailable. Bob Patterson is coming to ABC Tuesdays this fall. Georgia Tech by six in college football. Reminder, ABC Sports brings you the Little League World Series presented by Honda. Popka, Florida taking on Japan for the World Championship game, 6.30 Eastern. The game will also be available in SAP. Brent Musburger and the guys will be standing by after we're done here and you get some of your local news. What an ugly punt. <laughs> but you know what? <laughs> That's ugly. That's a dug. But you know, beauty is in the eye of the beholder, yeah. right? And right now, Schaefer's beholding that kick because it he, went out just outside Schaefer the wall. Schaefer thinks that's a beautiful play. Uh-huh. And Georgia Tech backed up in the shadow of their own posts. You got single, Gossi. single coverage up there at the top all over the field. He's going to throw that way. And a diving catch by Kelly Campbell. They pulled the string on a little bit. Godsey did. You, you do that because you can't see the receiver. There's guys in between you. You know where he's going to be, but you don't know if there's a defensive man going to pick it off. So you kind of pull the string on it. And if he gets Kelly Campbell standing up here, yeah. he might wheel on Latroy Oliver and never look back. I don't know why they just don't go around 10 yards and stop and hit him, give him the ball. Oh, man, I am telling you, there is nothing to do with a ground game for Georgia Tech today. Swanee? Well, you know, we're talking about Gachi, and he, and he got that pass to Campbell, and it was completed. But throughout this afternoon, I'm watching him, and, and Bob, he just doesn't look like he's throwing the ball well. Some of the passes he's thrown have been kind of floaters. They've been wobbly in there. Uh, a little bit short of the receiver. Yes, he's getting pressure, but I, I just don't see him throwing the ball very well this afternoon. 
You're might right. be he, that. He's, he's been getting knocked all yeah. around. But like I say, I think that time he was concerned, backed up, thrown out of your own end zone, that you weren't going to get it picked off. Sidney Ford in the backfield now. Play fake, Gotsy. This time he throws a nice one. Out across the 30 to the 32. Who else? Kelly Campbell, 20 more yards. And they've run that play a couple of times, and it's worked into the short side of the field. He's going to come down, release to the inside, inside the defensive back, and then Kelly has to throw the ball. Gotsy has to throw the ball to Kelly over the linebacker and in front of the defensive back. That was not an easy throw, short side of the field. Kelly Campbell, 10 catches and 193 yards. Wow. He's got single coverage on the near side again, but it's a ground game for Tech, and it's four. That's their best run of the day. About nine yards. A little quick opener, Willie Ford. It was a Ford on a Ford there. One put a bumper on the other, and it's second down and one. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> uh, you ready for some football there, partner? I guess so. <laughs> <laughs> and now Kelly Campbell comes up limping. Georgia Tech fans don't want to see that, I'll tell you that much. You know, he was downfield blocking for his partner. Check on that to see if it's a cramp. Could be this late in this game. Swanee told us earlier it's pretty hot down there. Ten minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Some wicked collisions in the backfield today. And that one led by Lewis Gashlin again. 280 pound sophomore out of Miami put a big hit on there and it's third down and short. Yeah it looks like a cramp. Yep. Well, this is a big third down for both teams with nine and a half to go. Bill Burns back in the lineup behind the fullback Mitchell. They'll run him. He didn't get it. Quentin Harris from the secondary, the first guy there. Look at that smile. One of their captains in that secondary, a four-year starter, makes a big, big play. One of the orange men down. And let's see who it is. I think it's Burton. Yeah. Charles Burton, who started the game at outside linebacker. And a little woozy and slow to I, get up. I think he's got a cramp too. Ways. Yeah. Yep. Can't put any pressure on his right foot. His right calf is yeah. cramping up on him. Surprised we haven't had more of that. As yep. hot as it is down there on the field. There's one on the other side. So Georgia Tech's got to give it up. Yeah. And more house to punt. Malik Campbell back deep for Syracuse. Syracuse player? I guess not. It almost looked like one of the guys running down on the wide side that had hit his foot, but it goes out of bounds anyway. 37 yard kick. Syracuse is a touchdown away from a possible win, and they've got 840 to work with when we come back. Hey, Bell Red Riding Hood. My, what big calories you have. My, what low calorie taste you have. My, my, my. This one's just right. My, what big eyes you have. You have no idea. Great tasting one calorie Pepsi One. This one's just right. You know, you never know when you're going to get injured and miss work. That's why I have that supplemental insurance. What supplemental insurance? Flat. It's one that pays you cash for things like lost pay and other expenses. What one? Affleck. Just ask about it at work, right? <laughs> what did you say I was? Affleck. Hey. Affleck. Without it, no insurance is complete. When the advantage is yours, it's only polite to give the competition a head start. Acceleration tests, Bonneville dominates the passing lane. And now it comes with an offer you won't want to pass up. Bonneville, 
luxury with attitude. That's Georgia Tech offensive coordinator Bill O'Brien in the middle. Mac McWhorter to the left of the screen. The offensive line coach and David Kelly, the receivers coach. They got the whole offense thinking over there, trying to figure out what to do to win this football game. But right now, Georgia Leary's defense has to stop Syracuse. They're, they're good coaches, but but they're, they're, Ralph Friedgen is not there making the calls. They've got to develop a chemistry with Bill O'Brien. They have to have good confidence, not in his, his Billy, but his call, play call. Over the middle, nice pass, and it's Tyree again. He's got a first down out across the 35, close to the 37. David Tyree's been a busy receiver today. He has. He's a New Jersey native, too, so yeah. he's having a good time in front of some of the hometown folks. Last year, he made a lot of noise by blocking kicks right over the center. Had a school record three block punts on special teams, but today, seven catches, 67 yards for the junior. First down out across the 36 yard line. 8.15 left. Mungro tries a stiff arm. He's cut down. Nice open field tackle by Albert Pori. As we go to Times Square Stadium in New York, John Saunders, John. Brad, it's time for the Coors Light update from the world of baseball. Sammy Sosa with two home runs toward the Cubs today, number 50 and 51. He joins Mark McGuire, who's only the second player to do it four straight years, only the third to do it four years overall. Babe Ruth also in there, 4 0. Brad. Thanks, John, and congratulations, Sammy. What a hitter. Oof. Yeah, that's a great story. Second down, 13. Nunes in trouble. Still in trouble. Found an open man in Mungro. But he's going to be dropped at about the line of scrimmage. He might have lost a yard, in fact. And I want, you know, he, but when he threw that ball, there was nobody around Mungro, and about three or four Georgia Tech defenders got on him in a minute. And this this talks to the to the development of the last couple of years. We were talking about to O'Leary about the speed of the the defense. Nobody on the screen there, but all of a sudden, boom, boom, boom. He said, if we're going to compete with Florida State in this conference, we've got to get faster guys. We've got to get better guys, and we've got to get faster guys. Biggest third down of the day, obviously. And it's Syracuse with a third and a dozen. Dudes, plenty of time as he sets and goes long. He's got a man out there. Incomplete. Couldn't hold it. Johnny Morant got up, got his hands on it, almost had a second chance to catch it when he hit the turf, but he couldn't hang on. Jonathan Cox was there covering, and Syracuse has to give it up. All right, Morant, number two, is going to go deep. He's the young man with all the potential. Catch it again. Almost. He just has to do it. They talk. They, they speak very highly about him. Probably higher than any of the receivers. Schaefer, great punt. Rhino looks up from the 18. Made the first two miss. Nice move. Kelly Rhino, a little fella, gets across the 30 to the 31. Nice return and 6:20 remaining in the ball game. Almost for Syracuse on that long ball, but Georgia Tech's got it when we come back. When the advantage is yours, it's only polite to give the competition a head start. In acceleration tests, Bonneville dominates the passing lane. And now it comes with an offer you won't want to pass up. Bonneville, luxury with attitude. When I told my agent I was playing fantasy sports, he got the wrong idea. I like it. Enjoy the show. <laughs> I would never do that. My fantasy league, unlike sports, is just good fun. I get the latest scores, player stats, even breaking news. Whatever you're into, dig into it deeper, unlike us. After throwing one into the barn and another into the chicken coop, I thought, wait a minute, my sore shoulders deciding where the ball goes 
Just as I was ready to pack it in, I remember what my doctor told me about Advil. He said for pain and stiffness, the best thing was to keep moving, and he recommended Advil to make it easier. Advil strong enough to let me control the pain and the ball. Take Advil and take control. Camp is where it all begins, and championship dreams are born. The American Bowl, Raiders, Cowboys, Monday night at 8 Eastern on ABC. From high above Giant Stadium, our pictures from the Goodyear Blimp Stars and Stripes based in Pompano Beach, Florida. At the controls, uh, pilot Tracy Rockhold from Akron, Ohio. Captain, good to have you with us. Thanks for the great pictures from above the Meadowlands. Syracuse schedule is murderer's row up through the 22nd of September when you consider Tennessee. Central Florida is not a pushover by any means. East Carolina from their conference in Auburn. And they could make a big statement if they could pull an upset somehow here in the next six minutes. And for Georgia Tech, Bob, you look at them, you know that they wanted to come out of the blocks, make a statement game, win this thing big, and say, okay, we are a top 10 team. But you know what? They are struggling for every little thing they've got. And they've got the Citadel and Navy before that big showdown on the 15th of September. Well, they don't ha quite have the non conference schedule that uh, Syracuse has, but. Uh, they got they got that big one in Florida State and then back to back with Clemson. That'll be the two big games for them in conference. Yep. Second and nine. Here comes a blitz. Godsey keeps it. Flags all over the place. Let's see if it's holding on the inside. Oh, personal foul. Face man. Been a couple of big penalties today against Syracuse that have helped Georgia Tech keep things going. You know, this is the first weekend of the college season. The last weekend of the college season to be college, in, in, college kind of interesting too, with the championship game being held at the Rose Bowl. Yep. Be the first time in what 55 years. That was a personal foul, face mask by the defense. Penalty is 15 yards from the end of the run. Automatic first down. First time in 55 years that neither a Big Ten or a Pac-10 team will be playing at the Rose Bowl. But unless uh, they're one and two. Unless they're it, exactly, it's exactly. Right. But I think it's going to be refreshing. I think it's going to be good to see two other teams playing in the Rose Bowl for a national championship. Georgia Tech by penalty with a first down at the 46. Godsey comes up slinging, incomplete, too far in front of his intended receiver, Jonathan. Jonathan Smith stretched out for it couldn't get anywhere near it with 525 remaining. Let's take a look at our pack life game summary. Troy Noon sacked three times but you know what he's been one tough cookie today. 122 passing yards he scored their touchdown. Freeney had a couple of sacks on a drive. Godsey's had to struggle to get his 219 yards. Kelly Campbell's been the offensive star but hasn't found the end zone. And here it's second down and 10. Georgia Tech just trying to survive the next five minutes and head back to the flats with a win, but they're a long ways from it, and Syracuse knows it. And Scanlon's all over Burns. The running game has been nearly non existent for Georgia Tech today. Yeah. Twenty seven carries for Joe Burns for 42 yards. Third down at 10. Got to be careful with this one, but you still want to keep the drive alive. One of those make or break plays, maybe, in this ball game. Godsey getting some pressure. And it's caught, but it's not a first down. The 48 yard line diving catch by Burns. If the ball would have been thrown a little better and closer to him, he could have caught it and run. As it was, he just had to catch it and he fell down trying to make the catch. It is fourth down at about five. There you see a great one handed catch because the ball was too far in front of Burns. And a fourth down situation for Georgia Tech. They've got the quarterback and everybody out there. Unless they're going to wait, take a penalty, and back up a little bit well, for the punt. Yeah, they're going to let the clock run down for sure. got seven seconds left on the 25 second clock so they're going to just let it run down maybe take take the penalty for sure 
And now they'll come off the field and out trots the punting unit. So they wore the clock down to 339. Now you want to make sure your snap is clean to dike your punter. <laughs> And then you want to kick that thing as far as you can and make uh, and Malik coverage. Campbell back up. Because one of the things, too, on the first opening weekend of the season is special teams. And special teams are sometimes you can gain an advantage. And if one team is good on special teams, we saw last night in the Oklahoma game, he had a kickoff return for a touchdown and a punt return for a touchdown. George O'Leary's told his troops time and time again, remember every fifth play in a football game involves a kick of some sort. They're coming after the punter, and he had no problem getting it away. And it goes out of bounds, though, off the side of his foot a bit. Where are they going to spot it? They keep walking and keep walking to the 25-yard line. Syracuse, with three and a half minutes to play, has a chance when we come back. Only one left. Who wants the last Frost Brew Coors Light? Beer Man. Beer Man. Whoa. Close one. Close. The Beer Man is going to have to consult the instant replay. <laughs> Upon further review, the lady gets the Coors Light. The Beer Man's fair. Look at her. But he ain't stupid. Look at me. When the advantage is yours, it's only polite to give the competition a head start. In acceleration tests, Bonneville dominates the passing lane. And now it comes with an offer you won't want to pass up. Bonneville. Luxury with attitude. around McDonald's steak, egg, and cheese bagel sandwich. Wow. Juicy steak, egg, melted cheese, and onions. So stop and check out our hard-to-resist breakfast bagel sandwiches at McDonald's because he's not sharing. We love to see you smile. Three minutes and 32 seconds remaining in the ball game in the kickoff classic with Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan. I'm Brad Nessler. Nice to have you along with us on this late August Sunday. Sunshine, warm temps, and a close ball game, a lot closer than anybody expected. Georgia Tech came in ranked 13th, Syracuse unranked, and now the Orange have a chance to win. It may not have been the prettiest game, but I guess drama-wise, you can't do any better than three and a half minutes to go. We don't know who's going to win it. Nunes waits. And now scrambles. Finds an open man in and out of the hands of Maurice Jackson. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the 2002 Pontiac Bonneville luxury with attitude Lincoln Financial Group clear solutions in a complex world Lycos whatever you're into dig into it deeper on Lycos and Rocky Mountain cold Coors Light are you ready for a cold one we might be when this one's over uh huh 325 left coach P looking on his team faces second and ten from its own 25. Noons from the gun. Troy waits and fires and just had nothing on that one. Didn't have pressure, but he one hopped it and intended for Jackson. It's really one of the first very poorly thrown yeah. balls we've seen today. You know, Brad, start of the season, I can't remember a year when there's been so many major coaching changes and such a wide variety of people picking teams to be the number one team right. at the end of the year. The, the paper this morning in the post picked uh, Georgia Tech uh, uh, Oregon State has it been picked uh, to win the national championship Florida and Florida State uh, Texas has been picked so mm -hmm. it's, it's a wide open season here's a quick slant behind Malik Campbell those were three quick plays right there that didn't net anything and only about 17 seconds used 16 well, seconds what, what you've got is a, is, is a non passing team in a passing situation and they didn't look like a passing team in those three plays. And now they got to punt the football. Mike Schaefer will kick it. Kelly Rhino's been a busy punt returner. He dropped a couple in the Peach Bowl. 
But today he's been very sure handed and very shifty back there. Schaefer high spiral Rhino fair catch he'll take it at about the 28 yard line 47 yard kick 310 to play at Giant Stadium. The National Association of Collegiate Directors of Athletics administers many of the associations for today's athletics professionals, from athletics directors, marketing, development, compliance, licensing, and business management. The NACTA Foundation provides internships and since 1983 has awarded more than $9.5 million in postgraduate scholarships. NACTA also administers the annual kickoff and pigskin classics, first mentors, and the Sears Directors' Cup, the leaders in intercollegiate athletics administration. We are NACTA. Joe Burns on the carry for Georgia Tech and I don't even know if he got a yard maybe that's been the story today and now Syracuse is going to take a timeout with three minutes and three seconds to go in the fourth quarter so they're down to two timeouts Georgia Tech has its full complement of timeouts if they need them but the last time Syracuse had the ball three incomplete passes and they only used 16 seconds before they gave it back up to the Ramblin' Wreck. Coming up later on at the conclusion of our game, we'll select a Chevrolet player of the game. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Find out who those fellas are in a few minutes. We got some pretty good candidates, actually. I think one might be a lock, but we won't tell you who it is. <laughs> when you have one of those all-world games, you tend to win that Chevy MVP next week uh, we're going to be at uh, Penn State uh, we're going to get a look at uh, Larry Coker coaching uh, the Hurricanes it should be a good one uh, you know major colleges big football schools new coaches uh, Alabama Georgia uh, Ohio State yep USC big time powers with new guys at the helm all with new coaches just just a few Kentucky's got new coach Maryland has Ralph Friedgen uh, North Carolina Virginia second down and eight Georgia Tech on the ground playing it safe that was a big run that's a big play they needed one big run all day long they might have just gotten it yeah. you don't need points you need first downs and just let some time run off the clock the redshirt junior out of Thomasville, Georgia, Joe Burns, has been struggling all day. This time he put his head down, wrapped both arms around that football, and took everybody with him yeah. to a first down at the 40. It's not a very good average, but uh, all he needs to do is hang on to the football here. He'll get it again. And again, he breaks free. Joe Burns cuts outside. Inside the 40. His average just went up. All the way to the 26 yard line. Bill O'Brien, I like that. Got a running play that works. He went right back to the same play. The identical play as the last time. Breaks a tackle at the line of scrimmage. Look at him hold on to that ball. Yeah. That's that's just good uh, good play calling. Career high 30 carries for Joe Burns. None bigger than that one. Give it to him again. And <laughs> he's got a little bit of adrenaline going now. Five more yards. So they're running over there to the right side behind Riley and Bennett. Matvey, the tight end. If you would have told me three plays ago that Joe Burns had a chance for a 100 yard game, I would have said you were wacky. But it's a possibility now. Down to two minutes. Georgia Tech ranked 13th and holding 13 on the board. They don't need any more. They just have to use clock. Syracuse has two timeouts left. Second down and five. Again, the two tight ends. Mitchell, the fullback. Burns again. Burns again. Little Joe. Down to the nine. All of a sudden, <laughs> the running game has come alive for, the, for Georgia Tech. He's got 104 yards, Bob. <laughs> he was oh, averaging 1.9 yards per carry. 
for the first 30 carries. And now he's got over 100. That average is still only going to be under three and a half, but uh, the last couple of runs have probably won Georgia Tech this football game. 120 left. And they have it right at the 10. A lot of plays in the red zone hasn't produced much. Burns to the one. Holy cow. Joe says I'm in, but I don't think he is. They have not had much success inside the red zone. That's just tough yardage. Sure is. Tech has been inside the red zone six times. 17 plays have produced 28 yards before this drive. They're going to use as much clock in this huddle as they can. It's winding its way near the half minute mark. It's second down and goal just outside the Syracuse one. Joe Burns has come to life on this drive when Georgia Tech desperately needed him. Joe Burns to about the two foot line. And that might be where the ball game ends. Syracuse apparently isn't going to stop it. George O'Leary doesn't need another touchdown. Joe Burns would maybe like one more carry. Yeah. Players want the points. That's a nice touch by George O'Leary yes, just is. to let it go with this. So Joe Burns, Syracuse chance for an upset on that drive. Touching 71 points. yards on the day, on the drive rather, for Joe Burns. And he just helped Georgia Tech survive a big scare. Touch of class, Georgia Leary. Yes, indeed. Our Chevrolet players of the game from our respective schools. Troy Noons was one tough cookie today. He got Syracuse. It's only touchdown. It took some big knocks along the way. Kelly Campbell, a near 200-yard day receiving the football for Georgia Tech. Chevrolet will donate a $1,000 scholarship and the names of those two to those respective schools. So it was a hot, long afternoon, and Georgia Tech got the scare of its early season life from a Syracuse team that was supposed to step aside for them, and it certainly didn't happen. Swanee's with a winning coach, Lynn. Coach O'Leary, it's a tough ball game. Give me your evaluation. Well, I tell you, if you had to have a first game and a tough one, that's the kind of the character game you're looking for. And, you know, we just made too many mistakes. We ran the ball at the end a little bit, and we should have been running it. But I think the big thing was, I think it was a great character game for our defense because they saw a lot. All that stuff was new. We hadn't seen that before from them as far as that, that bunch stuff. So did they, for, they, did they force you to be a little more conservative with your really, defense? It really did because we had to make some adjustments on the sideline, and that's new. They We hadn't seen that on film. So. I thought we, they did a good job. I thought offensively that, you know, we, we just, you know, I, I think we need to establish the run game. I thought we were slow there. And at the end of the game, I got on their butt a little bit about moving the ball. But I think we did. We had to do to win the game. But obviously, we did not have improvement offensively. Coach, thank you very much. Congratulations on thank the win. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right, Swanee. Georgia Tech, a winner, a survivor maybe is a better word. 13 to 7 over Syracuse. That's going to wrap it up from the kickoff classic. For Bob Greasy and Lynn Swan, I'm Brad Nessler saying so long from Giant Stadium. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports. 13-7, the rambling wreck of the Orangemen of Syracuse. As we head to Times Square Stadium.